Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's joining us right now. I see a lot of Muslims over in the chat, and that is good. Why are you guys here? Well, you recognize you have the opportunity to take down Christian Prince, to take down Sam Shamoon. You have that opportunity. Guess what? Your uh, your Quran, chapter 16, verse 125, commands you to invite everyone to the way of Islam. And we're going to give you that opportunity right here. Most of our viewers are Christians here. So you Muslims, we're giving you the opportunity to show all of these Christians that Muhammad is a true prophet and to convert these people to Islam. The only thing standing in your way, besides the truth, is... <laughs> Christian Prince and his good friend Sam Shamoon. I'm going to stay out of most of this. I'm going to be reading the comments, but but what I'm going to focus on during this live stream is I'm going to focus on Muslim comments where Muslims are actually giving us reasons to believe that Muhammad is a true prophet. So if right. if, if I if I if I'm ever looking at the comments and I don't see a comment from a Muslim, um, then we'll turn to some other comments and so on. But I'm hoping the Muslims here. I'm hoping the Muslims here will give us their best arguments to show us that Muhammad's a true prophet. We're, again, we're giving you this opportunity. This is, this is free for all Friday, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a free for all. You Muslims in the chat, you Muslims who sit there raising objections about Christianity over the past few live streams, now you get a chance to show that Muhammad's a true prophet, that the Quran is the word of God. And Amen. everyone is here. Everyone's waiting. We want to see what you've got. With me now is... Christian Prince, of course. Hey, Christian Prince, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, uh, David, I have uh, I have to admit I have to convert now because after your presentation, I mean that's amazing, that's so beautiful. Can I say shahada or later? Please. Take one. <laughs> say right now. By the way, <laughs> let them confirm they can hear Christian Prince uh, clearly, guys. <laughs> let us know that you can hear him clearly because he's going to be talking for most of the time. You guys all hear Christian Prince? Just want to make I'm sure. Pretty sure they do because okay. uh, I've got the uh, meter right here. Oh, are you it's, good? Because I'm giving a good readout. They hear me. Oh, I mean you know, I can turn it up for you, Sam. Oh, because I couldn't hear him. Yeah, there you all go. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Good, good. All right. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. We're ready to All right. So, uh, and we have uh, Sam Shimon. Sam, how you doing? Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how I'm doing. So let's just ask Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, to bless us. Lord Jesus, we love you. We're in love with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing Christian Prince. And I thank you for my fellow soldiers in, in the field, David Wood. Anthony Rogers, vocab alone. Lord Jesus, you know them. Bless us, Lord Jesus, for your glory. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, cover us and your people by your precious blood. Use Christian Prince to convict Muslims to fall in love with you, their only hope of salvation, and anoint us to speak truth clearly for your glory. We love you, Son of God. You are one with the Father and the Spirit, our God forever. In Jesus' name, anoint us. All right. All right. And uh, you Muslims who are in the chat, again, we're going to give you this special opportunity. Post whatever reasons you can think of whatever convinces you that muhammad's a true prophet post it there in the chat for us i will put it on the screen um sometimes the comments come so fast i can't read them all so if so if you give a reason and i miss it just go ahead and post it again we'll try and get to as many as we can um and there should be plenty because there were plenty of muslims in the chat before we went live right so now we're live there you now's your now's That's your chat right. um while we're while we're uh while i'm checking out the comments uh, I wanted I to ask, ask a question. wanted ahead, to ask sorry. yeah I wanted to ask a question of Christian Prince first but just because we talked about this on our last live stream but for people who weren't there during our last live stream um, I, I asked a question because it's a topic that comes up a lot and Christian Prince here's here's the issue uh, mm -hmm. as every Christian in the United States who's never actually interacted with a Muslim knows if you criticize Islam or the Quran or Muhammad and you say mean things, you, you, you say that Muhammad shouldn't have had sex with a nine-year-old girl, you say any of these things about Muhammad, you're just going to drive Muslims away. They're never going to listen to you. So shouldn't we avoid criticizing Islam and just focus on preaching the gospel? That's what I hear from tons of Christians. Is that correct? Well, this is what they say, but obviously the, the, the fruit we witness is totally different. You know, in, in my program alone, and I'm sure in from, from your work and Sam is the same, uh, we have hundreds, if not thousands of Muslims left Islam. And all what we do, we just expose Islam. So those, I, actually, I remember once a bishop, he says to me, and he's a bishop, you know, 
He said to me, what are you getting from this? So I said to him, you are, how old are you, sir? He said, 70 something. I said, okay, ask me, I will ask you how many Muslims you brought to Christ? He said, none. I said, ask me the same question. So he could not say anything. So they complain, but they don't want to do the job. So like, okay, if your work is, if, if your way is not working, let us do our way. And the, uh, the Messiah, our Lord, he is the first debater, you know, if, if those people, they knew the Bible very well, you will see that the Messiah, he was debating with the Jews. As an example, he says to them, what do you say of a Christ? They said to him, he is the son of David. And then he says, well, if he is son of David, then how David call him my God, you know, my Lord. So this is how the Messiah himself, he uh, 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 shared his, his, uh, his truth with the Jews. So it looked like those people, they don't want us to be the same as the Messiah. They don't want us to be the same as Paul, the same as all the apostles of Jesus. All actually, even the letters of, of the Bible are is, is what? Is about debate. Uh -huh. You know, what is the best way to be Christian? So they talk too much because simply they are not the one doing anything. And they blame those who do a lot of work for doing work. Yeah. So they are used as they are like the smoke which has no fire. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Can I, uh, I start it up, ask them some questions? You got another one. Um, well, we, we, we have some comments, but go ahead. Go oh, ahead start well, it off. No, go ahead. No, I was just, I didn't see any. If you have questions, start it. Then. All right. Know. All right. I don't know if this is uh, actually coming from a Muslim or from someone who wants us to <laughs> respond to uh, common Muslim arguments. But we have here, uh, Muhammad was prophesied uh, in Exodus and Deuteronomy, as well as the Song of Solomon. Now, David, you caught me by surprise. I know Deuteronomy and Song of Solomon. There's actually a prophecy that they point to in Exodus. Yeah, nothing's nothing's uh, coming to mind right now. So, uh, Chandler, if um, nice. uh, if you could tell us what you're talking about in Exodus, we we, we know what you're referring to in Deuteronomy and in yeah. Song of Solomon. So, Song of Solomon well, five sixteen yeah, and, and Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen. So, if you have a particular one in Exodus. Uh, go for it. So, uh, all right. Who wants to respond to these? Well, what I want to ask uh, CP, CP, can you give us some reasons to show that Muhammad cannot be like Moses and Muhammad's God is not like the God of Moses? Because the prophecy in Deuteronomy 18, CP, you know this. I'm preaching to the choir when it comes to you. The prophet's going to be like Moses. Was Muhammad like Moses, CP? Can you help us see? Well, first, first, you know, we, we have to take this into steps. Yep. When the Muslim they say that they are against the Quran, because the Quran says that uh, uh, Moses he was sent to the Pharaoh. You know, Moses and Aaron they were sent to the Pharaoh. Muhammad, according to Muslims, he is the only messenger who was sent to the mankind. So Moses he was sent to the Pharaoh, but yet he is the only he is a messenger for the Jews. And here you see contradiction. In the same time, we notice that the Quran says in chapter 14, verse number four, we never send the messenger except in the tongue of his people. So in order for Muhammad to be a messenger, in order for Moses to be a messenger, in order all messengers to be the same as each other, then the Quran have to be false because Allah never sent Moses unless to the people who speak his tongue, but yet we see him speaking to the Pharaoh. Muhammad, he should not be a messenger for somebody from Pakistan, but yet he is speaking to people who they are not Arab. In the same time, when the Muslim, they say that Muhammad is the same as Moses, in which way? The Quran says that uh, uh, in chapter 61, verse number six, it says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِسَى إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِنِّي رَسُولٌ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا etc. And then he says, there's a messenger will come after me. His name is Ahmed. His name is Ahmed. All right. So when the Muslim, they say that Moses is the same as Muhammad, do they mean that he will come to the Jews? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because if he is the same as Moses and the Muslim, they say, Moses come to the Jews only. That's mean Muhammad only come to the Jews. He cannot be to the Arab. If Muhammad is a person who is a messenger for all mankind, that's mean he is not the same as Moses. This is number one. Number two, the Quran says that you have to speak the tongue of the people. Which people? The people who or your own people. Muhammad, he did not speak the tongue of the people and he is not knowledgeable in the book. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad, he have no knowledge in the book, in the gospel, in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the Torah, and even in the book of Ibra uh, uh, Ibrahim, as they claim. Moses is a person 
who put, you know, he ha he like he have a lot of knowledge and he cannot be the same as Muhammad. Uh, uh, additional to that, Moses have miracles. Where is the miracles of Muhammad? Zero. Moses, as as example, God he split the sea for him. Uh, God did not. The God of Islam did not even split a watermelon for Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, how can be the same? You know. So when a Muslim he say they are the same, they try to say, well, uh, this guy uh, he went through a, a tough time, and this person go through the uh, everybody. I went through a tough time too. You know. I mean, all of us. I, I've been in war. So does that mean I'm a prophet? Anyone can claim to be a prophet. And if we try to create similarity, all of us, we are son of Adams, and we have many ways of being similar, you know? So it's a very silly argument to say that. But I, I, I would like you, uh, Sam, to ask the Muslims, those who say they are the same, I want them to tell us how, so we can get how busted. You know what I mean? I'm waiting for the Muslim to say how they are similar. So if you can give me some of what they say, so we can laugh together. Now, CP, another thing. One of the things that set apart Moses is that God himself came down in a pillar of cloud, showed himself in a pillar of cloud to Israel, and then Moses entered the cloud and saw the form of God. That's what Numbers 12, 68 says, saw the form of God, and God spoke to him directly. Now, if Muhammad is like Moses, CP, did Allah ever show up in Mecca and appear in a Allah visible never, way? According to Muhammad, uh, according to all Muslims, Allah did not speak to Muhammad. Muhammad never saw his Lord. And Muhammad always received all his revelation by a guy. His name is Jibreel. <laughs> and who did he look like? Jibreel looked like who? Like Dahil Kalbi, who is a very handsome boy, a handsome uh, man in, in, in Quraysh. And here, here we need to ask ourselves, why does Jibreel did not come to Musa's as long as Musa's and Muhammad are the same? Mm -hmm. You know? Why the delivery to Musa's was not by Jibreel, but the delivery to Muhammad was by Jibreel. Yeah. Same time, why Allah he wrote for Moses? The Quran says that Allah he wrote for Moses by his by his hand. You know he read the tablet, so Allah wrote for Moses by his hand, but Allah he wrote nothing for Muhammad. Even the Quran was collected not by Muhammad, was collected by uh, someone who came after uh, uh, Muhammad. His name is Uthman. Uh, so what is the similarity? The only similarity I see the Muslim they can they can find that uh, 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 both. They claim to be a prophet, but one is a true prophet and one is tr false prophet. Yeah. I'm going to add to that, CP, because uh, we want to tap into your knowledge. Now, another thing, <clears throat> according to Deuteronomy 24, 104, it says, this is the God of Moses speaking through Moses. It says that if a man divorces his wife, she marries another. Deuteronomy 24, verses 104. And the second husband dies or divorces the woman. She cannot return to her first husband. Because that's an abomination to the God of Moses. Now, CP, explain to us. Now, I want to make sure everyone heard that. Everyone heard what I said? The God of Moses told Moses in Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4, if I'm married and I divorce my wife, she remarries, she can never come back to me. That would be an abomination. CP, explain to us, Muhallal. In Islam, can a man divorce a woman and his wife return to him even if she's married? And what is that called? What the guy that does that, isn't it? His name is Muhallal. Explain that to us, CP. Further proof. Muhammad is not like Moses. A Muslim man, he can divorce his wife as many as he wish. And when he receive, when he reach the, the number three, she have to go and sleep with someone else, not only to marry him, even Muhammad in the hadith, he said, uh, until she tastes her juice. Wow. And he tastes her juice. If we go to the dictionary, the word asila, it means orgasm. So not only she have to marry a new husband, she have to taste his orgasm and he have to taste her orgasm. And then after that, the new husband divorce her. She can go back to the previous husband. And this is, can be found uh, uh, in, in, the, in the Quran yes. where it says uh, if, if you divorce uh, uh, your women, etc. in chapter 2, verse number 230, uh, 233. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. So, uh, Sipi, just so they can understand what you said. You're saying, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 230. If a man divorces his wife, it, we call irrevocably the third pronouncement of divorce. He cannot take her back because I want them to hear this because I want them to hear the shock. He cannot take her back until she marries someone and that man tastes her juice and divorce her. Is that what you just said? That's what the Islam teaches? Yeah, this one, this one in 230 and then 233 give more details. So in the Hadith, Muhammad, he gave more explanation. So the Quran 2, number, chapter number 2, verse number 230 says, if she is divorced after that, which means three times, 
she cannot go back to him unless she if a new man. Wow. And Muhammad in the hadith says, she cannot go back unless she tastes her juice and he tastes her juice. Look for Allah. Sifi, come on, man. I thought Islam, the Quran is beautiful. It's, you know, it's poetic. Why you talk like this? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I am not the one saying that. This is what the Quran is saying. Oh, you know, okay too. this is what the Quran, I mean, and this is, uh, uh, the Quran says it three times. And here we need to ask why three times? I mean, what about four times? Again, the Trinity appear in Islam. Everything about in the Trinity. Mary, she have to fast three days from talking. Uh, Zachariah have to fast three days from talking. You divorce your wife three times, and then she cannot get back to you unless she goes sleep with someone else. And then Ash, uh, Muhammad, he fast for three days. I mean, everything is a three time. Even if you go to the bathroom, you have to shake your private part three times. So I guess you guys got enough information proving Muhammad is not like Moses. You can add a final detail. In Exodus 4, 22, 23, it says that Israel is the firstborn son of God. Exodus 4, 22 to 23, you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, I will slay your, your son, even your firstborn. So Israel is the firstborn son of God. Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. You are the sons of the Lord your God. Now, in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 18, it says, The Jews are not the sons of Allah, nor are they his beloved. End of story. Muhammad cannot be like Moses. We have another what, question. What about, but, what about Moses? Moses, he did not marry children. Muhammad was marrying children. Exactly. Moses was not accused to be a thief. Muhammad was accused to steal an underwear. Uh, uh, Moses did not say, if, uh, if, uh, if the prophet, he want to have sex with any woman, she want to give herself, you know, and this is a privilege to him. So if Muhammad the same as Moses, how come he gave a privilege to him? The first of the booty, the first of the, of the money. If you want to see Muhammad, you have to pay him. Where in the Bible it says, if you see Moses, you have to pay him. Where in the Bible it says that if, if, if a woman, she want to give herself to Moses so he can sleep with her. Where in the Bible it says that Moses was accused of stealing, stealing clothes. I mean, so, I mean, how they can be the same together. So in order for Moses to be a Muslim first, he have to be following Islam and practice all the practice of Muhammad. Where Moses kissed the black stone, where Moses says that a spray the direction to the Kaaba, where Moses he said if you if you touch a stone, uh, the stone will erase your sin. Where Moses he said uh, uh, like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the dog the, the, the dog is is the devil. I mean we should have the same the same uh, same belief you know when you speak about the same. So we have we have to share. God, we have to share the, the belief, we have to share the system, we have to share even the practice, even the fasting is not our fasting. So what Muhammad have to do with Musa's? Nothing. But here, uh, 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 Sam, remember something, that when somebody have no heritage, he try to look for one. You will see someone, he says, I am the cousin of this king, because he want to be proud. And this is exactly what the Muslim, they try to do. Muhammad has no honor, so they are trying to find him an honor by fraud. Yes. In fact, I, I, I said we're going to move on, but this is this final example because it's very important to show how immoral Muhammad is. Christians, I want you to hear this, and CP is going to explain the difference in Islam and the Quran. Notice what Moses says, Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14, about 20, 200 years before Moses, Muhammad even showed up. Moses forbids Israelites from sleeping with captive women. <clears throat> He orders them that if you find a captive woman that you find attractive, you give her one month to mourn her dead and marry her, treat her as a wife. Let me read it. Deuteronomy, and by the way, this was revolutionary in its historical context. Even liberal scholars will say that this command is revolutionary. It's unheard of in its historical context. The fair treatment and respect for captive women. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. Christians hear this. Muslims hear this. The difference between Moses and your prophet. When you go forth to war... Against your enemies, Deuteronomy 21, 10 and 14. And the Lord your God has delivered them into your hands, and you have taken them captive. And you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and have a desire for her to have her as your wife. Okay? Then you are to bring her home to your house. She is to shave her head and, and trim her nails, signs of mourning. <clears throat> she must also discard the clothing of her captivity, because in order to remove the stigma that she has been taken captive, get rid of those clothes to help her in that transition. And she'll remain in your house and mourn her father and her mother for a full month. After that, you may have relations with her. You can't touch her for a month. Let her mourn and be her husband and she will be your wife. Now notice how beautiful this is. It will be if you are not pleased with her, then you must let her go wherever she pleases. But you may not sell her 
at all for money, nor are you to make merchandise of her because you have humbled her. Now, CP, this is revolutionary, the God of Moses. In Islam, do you find a command where Muhammad, Muhammad said, if you see a captive woman, you can only marry her, otherwise you can't touch her. What does Muhammad and his God say? Actually, Muhammad, he said it clearly that you can have sex with all your slaves. And even when the, you know, especially in the case of the uh, Muhammad, the Muslim, they were fighting with their friends, their cousins. So when the men of Muhammad, they came to him, they said, but we know their husbands, which means they are our friends. He said, it doesn't matter. They are yours. So if you go in the Quran, chapter four, verse number three, it says you can have sex with your slave, not to marry her. In the same time, chapter four, verse 24, chapter four, 25, chapter four, 36, 16, 71, 23, six, etc. All over the Quran says, whatever you own in your right hand possess, they are yours and you do not need to marry them. As an example, Mary the Copt was not from the right hand process. We call the right hand process is captive of, of, of war, as you said. And here you notice Muhammad here, even he broke his own command. The Quran says you can have, you can rape those women who they are captive, but Mary the Copt, she was not a captive from war. She was a slave gift, yet Muhammad, he slept with her. And here you notice Muhammad, you know, he is not only far away from Moses and everything, he is taking gifts, sleeping with the gift, raving women, and they are. he is not saying to his men, marry them. They are just a slave. There's a book, it's called Muatta Malik. If you read it, you will, you will see how the Muslims, they treat their slaves. As an example, Omar al-Khattab himself, he did beat a slave just because she covered herself. Because by covering yourself, you are making yourself equal to a free woman. So, uh, uh, you will notice here how Musa is saying it clearly. And the reason, one of the reasons I believe, uh, Musa, he said uh, uh, that they should, they, they, the law should, should, like, she should shave her ha hair. I think there's more than one reason. Uh, uh, but I find it very important is to, 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 to think about it this way. If a woman, she have no hair, she is not attractive. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. so the man will not be tempted by having a slave. The same time, the woman, she will be, let us say, give her some comfort about from what she went through. She was in her family house, and now she is a captive. From a free woman to a captive. This is not easy. So imagine what Muhammad he did. Muhammad, he took as an example, Safiya. He raped her before even he arrived home in, in the edge of her house. The same he did with many, many women. He raped them right away after he captived them, and he enslaved them. So we notice a huge difference between both and we cannot even match. But as I said, when you have no honor, you try to look for one. Yeah. This is why the honor says. CP, another thing I want you to affirm because they didn't come out. Isn't it true in 424, not only can you sleep with captive women, but even if they're married, their husbands are alive, you can still rape them and sell them, right? Absolutely, yes, 424. I mentioned, that. Yeah, but I did much, that mention, as you said, I did not mention that it is even if they are, a Muslim man it cannot marry a married woman unless she is a captive. So this is why I said the husband they say that the, the the Muslim they say to Muhammad, well we know their husbands. You remember I said that we know their husbands, which means they are married. So Muhammad he said, so what? They are yours. So this is what the verse saying. Even if they are married, you can take them. Yes, exactly. Sorry, you did say that. I just wanted it to come out clear because I want them to see how filthy this religion is. But what else do we have? Uh, I just wanted to add uh, add one point that would apply to sort of any prophecies that Muslims are uh, want to pull out of um, the Bible. Because um, Deuteronomy was mentioned. I just wanted to quote Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. Um, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Notice. Uh, Moses, right here in the in the same chapter, just two verses after the prophecy that is supposedly about Muhammad, just two verses later, um, we are told a prophet who meets either one uh, either one of two criteria has to be a false prophet, and he would have been put to death. One, if he speaks in the names of other gods, or two, if he delivers a revelation that didn't come from God. He claims it's from God, but it didn't actually come from God, and it could be verified that that his revelation didn't come from God. Um, that prophet would have to die. Um, why is this relevant? Well, Muhammad, in the history of At-Tabari, volume 6, page 111, said, and I quote, I have fabricated things against God and have imputed to him words which he has not spoken. Let me read it again. I have fabricated things against God and have imputed to him words which he has not spoken. 
what was the uh, what was the uh, the criterion that we read in uh, Deuteronomy 18? If someone claims to speak in the name of God, but the revelation doesn't actually come from God, that prophet would have to die. Muhammad said that he did it. This is in reference to the infamous satanic verses where Muhammad received a revelation promoting polytheism and then came back and said, sorry, the devil made me do it. Um, according to Deuteronomy, he would have been sentenced to death. So Muslims claim to Muslims claim to respect Moses. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if Muhammad had delivered the satanic verses during the time of Moses, Moses would have said, everyone pick up a rock and hit him with it. And he would have been stoned to death. So notice that would apply to any passage you want to bring up from the Bible. Any passage you want to bring up, any prophecy about Muhammad. Uh, guess what? According to the Bible, Muhammad is a false prophet who, during the time of Moses, would have been executed as a false prophet. And we know what the New Testament says about false teachers, false prophets coming and so on. So Muhammad's going to fail uh, no matter what. All right. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. Someone asked what the verse was. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. Just remember that. Okay. Next question for CP. What's up? This one's from Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr oh, Ghazali. Yeah. He says, Muhammad came uh, with Tawheed. So we asked for reasons to believe that Muhammad is a true prophet. And Abu Bakr, who believes in Tawheed, said, well, Muhammad came with Tawheed. So Muhammad came. Now notice, notice the circularity, by the way, already, right? Here is the true concept of God brought by Muhammad. Okay, well, how do you know that Muhammad's a true prophet? Because he brought this concept of God that I've already decided is true. Now, now notice you, you could you could say that about anything, right? If you're if you're if you're a Christian who believes in the Trinity, and someone says, "How do you know that that's true?" Well, because the the, the authors of the Bible brought forth the doctrine of the Trinity, as we all know, and it's true. So, so this proves that it's the word of God. Do you, do you see the circularity there, Abu Bakr Ghazali? Uh, but anyway, so uh, Christian Prince, Sam, why is this a really, really bad argument? That's right. CP, does Islam really teach Tawheed, the worship of one God? Or are there other gods? Or did first, of all, of tawheed, God? first, first of all, Tawheed is not worship in oneness. Tawheed in Arabic means to unify. So how it is one, but it unify. So is it one about one as number or one about unity? The word Tawheed is a wrong word to use to prove the point. And this is a proving to us how silly Islam is. They don't speak Arabic, they don't know Arabic, and then they, yet they use the word Tawheed, which is against what Muslims claim. Because when you say Tawheed, ask anyone. You can type it right now in Google. Tawheed, that's mean unification. Tawheed does not mean oneness. It means unification. Like, you know, Tawheed, I just said, unification of the Arabian states. As simple as that, perfect sentence. So the word Tawheed is wrong. Secondly, as long as Allah is one, and by the way, who cares if Allah is one or ten? If there is an Indian guy, he have 1,000 God, but they are true God, still he is a true. Yeah. The number doesn't mean any different. I mean, this is stupid. Like if somebody says, I have 10 cars, and he have 10 cars, well, they are 10. Hello? So if there's 10 God, there's 10 gods. If there's one, there's one. That will not change anything. Secondly, if, if, if Allah is one, how he say in the Quran? In chapter 21, verse number 17, if we desire to take a partner as a wife, lahwan, women, we will take it from ourselves. If Allah is one, how he will marry from himself? I challenge any Muslim to solve the problem because he is one. You see, the Muslim, when we say to them, Allah, he say we, they say this is a majestic statement, like king, we say we. Okay, but here is talking about taking a partner which is a woman. So in chapter 21, verse number 17, it says, had we desire to take to us a partner, and Arabic, it says, lahwan, which means a female woman, we will take it from ourself. Okay. How Allah can take partner with ourself if he is the only unique person who have a kind of himself? You know what I mean, uh, David and Sam? Yes, sir. I understand. That means there has to be more than one for Allah to take a partner from them. Yeah. Can can we marry God to a woman, normal woman? Can we marry God oh. to, uh, to a donkey? Can we marry God? I mean, when he says ourself, he himself, he used the word ourself. So as long ourself, it's been from us. And to say from us, okay, that's mean, okay, we are the same kind. Yeah. So you under, everyone understood what he just said. These guys blaspheme. Mm. Okay. Yeah, everyone understood what he just said. When he says that we can take a partner from uh, from ourselves, that means ourselves must be a true plural. There has to be more than one. 
and Allah then can choose from one among those that are with him to be his his girlfriend, his lover. So that again refutes Tawheed. What about CP in chapter 112 of the Quran, Surah Al-Ikhlas, where it says, Allah Ahad. Can you explain the real meaning of when it says, Kul Allahu Ahad? Explain the real meaning of there because the Muslims have deceived us into thinking that the word Ahad there means one. What does it really mean in Arabic? The word Ahad mean one of does not mean one. The word one in Arabic is Wahid. So when we say Wahid, it's mean one. When we say Ahad, we mean one of. And this is appear in more than 29 a place in the Quran at least, or 30. And it says all of them, you can check anywhere where it says Ahad. And last time actually we spoke about it, that the Quran keeps saying like, we don't differentiate with our prophet between any of them. And the word any of is Ahad. Uh, as an example, uh, if you read uh, Sam, you can read the chapter three, verse number 73. Okay, let me get it for you, yeah. CP. You, um, let me get it. Just in, let me get it, folks. One second. Here goes the Quran browser. Chapter 3, verse 73. We're going to get it. So, guys, listen to what he's saying because he knows the Arabic. It's his mother tongue. Don't let Muslims deceive you. Ahad in chapter 112, verse 1 doesn't mean one. It means one of. So, Allah is one of what? Now, let me read 373 for CP. I'm going to read Pikthal, even though you can correct his mistranslation. It's 373. And believe not, save in one who followeth your religion. Say. O Muhammad, lo, the guidance is Allah's guidance, that anyone is given the like of that which was given unto you, or that you that they may argue with you in the presence of their Lord. Say, O Muhammad, lo, the bounty is in Allah's hand. He bestoweth it on whom he will. Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. So is that the part where it says anyone? Anyone, exactly. So that's Ahad, right? <laughs> so, and see here, here, see the hypocrisy. How Ahad in that verse only in the whole Quran suddenly became one, when the whole Quran translates the word Ahad as any one or one of, you see the hypocrisy? How the word suddenly changed? Ahad always mean one of, you know? One of, uh, one of many, one of two, one of three, one of four, doesn't matter. He is one of others. So when Allah, he says, Allah is Ahad, well, that's, that's a problem and that's a mistake. Unless he is saying Allah is Ahad, the God who was around the Kaaba. There was one of the idols who was around the Kaaba, whose name is Ahad. So hmm. it might be that Allah or the verse saying, say that Allah is the same as Ahad. It's just another name for Ahad. Now, you know, when the Muslims, by the way, when the Muslims, they say Allah, uh, uh, Muhammad, he came for Tawheed, right? Yes. Okay, uh, the, the, the Kaaba have 360 uh, uh, idols. So do we unite, unify them all? We became all, we we made them all Allah. Is that what it's mean? This was mean. By the way, uh, 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 David, mm -hmm. there's somebody posting bad. Uh, yeah, bad we uh, bottom blast yeah. wine. We know. Yeah, okay. he has no shame. But CP, to add to this point, guys, pay attention. Chapter one twelve says Allah is one of. That's first mistake proving Quran doesn't teach Tawheed. Secondly, CP, isn't it true in chapter nine verse thirty one? It says that Allah wants people to take Him and Messiah as lords and no one else. Yeah, this is actually when, but when you, when you read the translation, it comes differently. Yes. They say to take Allah. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. So in Arabic, it says, you know, uh, 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 they are taking their monks and their rabbis as God instead of Allah and the Messiah. But the Muslims in their translation, they put it as they wish and they change it. So they make it no. They took their monks and their rabbis and Jesus as God instead of Allah. When the fact this is a fabrication. So you're saying the Arabic clearly, because you know the Arabic, the English, we don't know, we, we're English speakers, poor us. You're saying chapter 9 verse 31 says that the Jews and Christians, their mistake was that they took the rabbis and monks as lords besides Allah and the Messiah, meaning that Allah and the Messiah should be their one Lord. That's what the Arabic says? Yes, exactly. This is what the Quran is saying. I will read in Arabic and I change the Muslim to say I'm lying. And they changed it to Here you notice, by the way, it says it clearly instead of the Messiah and Allah, and then it says the word Wahidan. You see the word one? That is one. Wahid. Not Ahad. That is the correct one. That's the correct word for the word one. Wahid hmm. in that verse, not Ahad. But here, by the way, uh, uh, Sam, as long as we are talking about this, 
you know, the Muslim they say uh, that the, the 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 Torah is corrupt, right? Yes. Okay. And then they try to witness to us from the Torah that Muhammad is there, right? Yep. Isn't it that funny? And then the Quran in chapter 5, verse 44, it says that Allah trusted the, the Jews to protect the Torah. So look at this, this madness. The Muslims, they say Muhammad is the same as Moses. But then the book of Moses is gone. So how we can find he's the same as Moses from the corrupt book? Look how silly. Secondly, then they say to us that... Uh, uh, we worship one God and then they say we worship one God, but we kiss black stone and we believe in things that have nothing to do with Moses and then they add to that that Allah he trusted the Jews to protect the Torah Chapter 5 verse 44 says that Allah entrusted the Jews uh, uh, Sam your English is better than mine for sure and David what did trust mean when we say entrust? That means that he gave it to their care and protection to preserve it Yeah, but the trust it's mean like you are good, right? Yeah, I know you are I'm trusting you with this because you're yeah. reliable. Yeah, look, hey man, I trust you with my money. I trust you with my with my car because okay. you're reliable. That's why so I trust you. Did, did Allah get, make a wrong decision, a wrong trust? Because when you trust somebody, you know. I mean, this is God, right? Yeah. So if I am God and I trust you, that's mean I know what you will do later. So when Allah, he trusted the Jews to protect the Torah, do he knew that they are not trustworthy or he don't know? <laughs> Well, see, people be surprised. Shabir Ali now believes that Allah, the future may be open to Allah. He's embracing open theism. Allah may not know the future. So Shabir Ali may say, yeah, he probably didn't know. You're but, but he has to come to this conclusion because obviously Allah, he do not know the past, neither the future. Because yeah. in the Quran says, okay, uh, uh, Sam, for sure you can, you, can, you can teach us better in this case. A summary, he met Moses in the Quran. Samaritan, huh? Samaritan, yeah. In Arabic, we say a summary. Um, okay. Chapter twenty of the Quran. Yeah, the Samaritan. The Samaritans did not exist. So how this so, happened? Yeah, exactly. You know. So which Musa they are talking about? Obviously, the, even the Musas in the Quran is not our Musas. I mean, how he can be exist in this in the time of the Samaritan? And this is not. This is stupid. So here we notice that the Quran is a book of of madness, and it's mixed up. He do not know. Uh, Mary is the is the uh, is the sister of Aaron. And her father, his name is Umran. And Musa, his father's name is Umran. Yep. And Aaron, his name, his father's name is Umran. Yep. So now here we go. We have we have a family. We have Umran. We have Musa. We have Maryam. And we have their grandson. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But let me, let me just repeat what you said for everyone so they can get it. Guys, understand what CP is showing you. The Moses of the Quran, <clears throat> his father's name is Imran. That's even in the Hadith. And remember, according to the Quran, Moses' brother is Aaron. And yet in the Quran, the mother of Jesus is the sister of Aaron. That's chapter 19, verse 28. The daughter of Imran, chapter 66, verse 12, says she's the daughter of Imran. And in the Quran, it says that Mary's mother is the wife of Imran, chapter 3, verses 35, 36. The only Moses, whose father's name was Imran, who has a brother named Aaron, and Aaron's sister named Mary, is actually depicted as being the mother of Christ, making Moses the uncle of Christ. Because in Numbers 26, 59, it says, Emram, his wife Yochabed, gave birth to Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. And yet this Miriam, Aaron, and Moses happened to be the family of Jesus because Jesus' mother Mary is the sister of Aaron and her daddy's Imran. So Moses is Jesus' uncle. That's beautiful, CP. I mean, and then on top of that, CP, Musa also must have met Eliasin. Can you explain why in the world El Elijah is called Eliasin? I didn't know that names can be plural. I know Elias, but then Eliasin? What's going on here, CP? Can you explain the logic of the Quran? Well, you know, at first there are names in the in the Quran. We do not know where they are coming from. Yeah. But if you go to chapter Yasin, Yasin, Yasin is not Elijah. Yasin, Ya is a word meaning God. Sin is the moon God. Mm -hmm. Ya Sin. Muhammad, he copied the name, he do not know what it's mean. If you go to the Quran and you ask the Muslims, okay, what is Ya Sin mean? You will see as an example in many texts here says, Allah knows best. All right? Allah knows best. And then everyone, he starts to guess what is the word mean. But the fact you can go right now and search. You will find that Yah is an old word for God, and Sin is the name of the moon god. 
Muhammad, he was saying, ya seen, not, uh, uh, not anything. And then the Muslims, they try, they start, they start uh, 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 compromising words and try to make it Elijah when they want. So, I mean, I mean uh, Isa, like as an example, where is Isa? Who is Isa? Yeah, who is he? Okay, well, who is who is Amran? Even even who is Israel? You know, in the other day, uh, Sam, there's a there's a guy who was making fun of uh, of the word Israel. He says not not the word. He was saying Israel. He was struggling with God. He was wrestling with God, right? Mm -hmm. So I said to him, but so why your God Allah he ad adopted the word Israel? He said what? He said so if you are making fun of the story, how come Allah he called him Israel? He said what does that mean? I said this is what the word means. <laughs> exactly. So, by yeah, adopting right. the name, you adopt the story, mm -hmm. because this is the, what the word Israel mean. Exactly. So they make fun of the story, but the fact the Quran confirmed the story by saying the word Israel. So the Muslim they have tons of words in their Quran because their Quran is a counterfeit of other belief, Christianity, Judaism, Sabi, and you name it. So, like as an example, the Quran says that the father of uh, Abraham is Azar. Who is Azar? Yeah, who is he? Tell me, CP. You're confused. I thought it was Terah. What happened? Azar yeah, Azar is a word me foolish. And uh, 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 Abraham, he was saying to his father, foolish. Are you going, this is foolish. Are you going to worship idols? That makes sense. And here you see how much disconnected the one who recited the Quran, Muhammad, and the one who wrote the Quran, Waraka. Muhammad is reciting what Waraka he said, but he do not know what Waraka mean. This is why the Quran says there's many verses in the Quran. Nobody knows what they mean save Allah because Waraka did not explain that to Muhammad. So I just want to make sure people got what you said. Guys, notice, Abraham's father in the Quran, his name is Azar. The Bible says Terah. <clears throat> in the Quran, Jesus' mother Mary is a sister of Aaron. Her father is Imran. The only Mary, Maryam, who had a brother named Aaron, whose father's name was Imran, is the sister of Moses. Eliasin, we have no idea who the heck that is, even though it's supposed to be Elias, even though his name is not Eliasin. But CP, since we're on Toid, I just want, want one more verse because you're the Arabic expert. And you can confirm this. Not only do you have in chapter 9, verse 31, where it says, Allah doesn't want Jews and Christians to take rabbis and monks as lords besides Allah and Jesus, the Messiah. So the only Lord Allah wants them to take is Him and Messiah. But is it not true? And you may need to look at the Arabic and you'll confirm this. Chapter 3 of the Quran, CP, verse 18. I'm going to read what the Arabic says. and You can confirm. It says, Allah Himself bears witness. There is no God but Him and the angels and the men of learning. Isn't it true that in the Arabic, Allah is saying, there is no God but me and the angels and the men of learning? In other words, the Arabic, whoever wrote this or recited it, made a boo-boo by saying that Allah bears witness that he, the angels and the men of witness are Allah. Can you confirm that, please? Let, let us uh, fix something here. Allah here, he didn't say, I witness that I am. Allah, he said, suppose the verse. It says, it's, I, I will translate exactly word by word. Please. Allah witness that there is no God except He. And here there's a mistake. Because if Allah is talking, how Allah He witness that there's no God but He, He should say, Allah said that there's no God but I. Or He say, I am God, worship me. And then He says, and the angels and the, the one with the knowledge, all of them, they are doing like let's say, uh, 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 like the just or let's say, uh, um, practicing the knowledge of Allah, all right, and which is assigned to Allah. So here we, we find that the angels and people of knowledge and Allah, all of them, they share one thing, and that is impossible. Wow. So, so the structure of the sentence is very funny. And then, by the way, here, Allah, He witnessed to who? He's witnessing to Muhammad. Allah is Muhammad's servant. What's wrong with you, CP Abdul? Potatoes. No, no, no Allah, when, when, I, when I witness, I witness to other. Allah, He witnessed to who? Exactly. To, uh, to us, he witnessed to us that there is no God but but Him. I mean that's that's not that's not uh, that's not smart because I witness to God, but God witness to who? Good question. You know, like, it's about authority. You know, because when I witness, when I witness, I witness in the front of a judge. Somebody is higher than me, and I witness. I give. I like I say. Uh, uh, I make a statement which is i believe is true all right now allah is witnessing in front of who nobody saw allah witnessing nobody heard allah witnessing allah spoke to nobody not to muhammad 
Even Jibreel, according to Muslims, Jibreel, he was collecting the information from the tablet. He did not speak to Allah. So Allah witness to who? That's a good question. Quarantine minds want to know. I would have to say to you, Allahu Alam. Yeah, well, uh, let me uh, let me go ahead and add this comment since it's a uh, it's along the same lines. But I noticed uh, another comment from Chandler Burks. He said, "Reason three, Chandler, uh, I must have missed reason number two. I was scrolling through, but uh, uh, as people in the chat noticed, we did have a uh, we did have a problem. Oh, matter of fact, it's been over the past couple live streams where someone from I doubt it's from Christianity has been trying to post porn links whenever we're talking about Islam. So we start talking about Islam, someone starts posting porn links left and right. Uh, anyway, people in the chat told me, hey, you can uh, you can block people from posting links, which will solve this problem. Uh, problem was I had no idea how to do that. So I had to go. And uh, that's what I've been doing over here. I was uh, I was looking up tutorials on how to uh, block links. Anyway, I think we got that problem taken care of. Um, but uh, for we, right here, we have um, Chandler Chandler's um, third reason, which is basically what we just saw from uh, Abu Bakr Ghazali. Uh, he said, Muhammad preached the absolute yeah. unity of God, unlike the Trinity, which is explained differently in all three major faith traditions, Catholic, Protestant, and Eastern Orthodox. So yeah. Muhammad has a consistent, complete unity in his theology, unlike Christians. So that makes it true. That makes Muhammad a true prophet. Real quickly for Chandler. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, one second. One second. I, I just have to point out here, right? I just have to point out because... Um, <clears throat> Muslims rarely think about the implications of their arguments, right? So, notice right here, I, because Sam, he yeah. just gave me everything I need to prove that Muhammad's a false prophet, exactly. right? right, right, right. Um, Chandler, I hereby, suppose someone comes up and says, hey, I hereby declare that God is an absolute unity. According to the argument that you just gave, that would mean that this person is a true prophet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So every, notice, every Muslim who affirms the absolute unity of God would be a true prophet, according to what you just said. If you preach the absolute unity of God, you are a true prophet. But guess what? Muhammad claimed that he's the, the seal of the prophets. But there's tons of prophets after him because there's tons of people who declare the absolute yeah. unity of God. In fact, as we've been seeing, far more than Muhammad actually preached, yeah, so right? Yeah, it was Muslims today, <laughs> there are lots of Muslims today who believe in a, uh, in, a, in a far more unitarian concept of God than Muhammad believed in. But uh, notice what you've just said. So all these people would be prophets. Therefore, Muhammad's claim that he's the seal of the prophets would be false. Therefore, Muhammad's a false prophet. Thank you for proving that Muhammad's a false prophet. But now yeah. I want to add something. And I don't want to. I want CP to comment, but I do want to answer this question. Chandler Burke, I hope you've been paying attention. CP has just put holes in the assertion that Muhammad taught the absolute oneness of Allah. We just showed that the Quran teaches anything but that. Even though Muhammad wanted to say Allah's one, he ended up saying things that made Allah more than one and actually affirm the existence of the plurality of gods. But even with that said, among Muslims, even to this day, Muslims cannot agree about the nature of Allah. For example, the Salafi Muslims believe Allah actually has a body. Listen to this, Chandler Burks. I want you to listen to this carefully. Salafi Muslims believe Allah has a body unlike anything in creation, but He has a body. He has eyes. He has two right hands. He has a shin. He has a waist. These are actual parts of Allah, body parts, even though they're unlike anything creation. But then you have the Muslims who are known as the Ashari or the Maturidi who say Allah's bodiless. He doesn't have a body and these are simply anthropomorphisms. So that is a bold-faced lie even when it comes to Muslims today. Let alone going back into early Islamic history with the debates between the Mutazilites and what became known as the Orthodox Muslim group because the Mutazilites were influenced by Greek philosophy, Aristotelian logic, and they denied the existence of attributes as separate from the essence. But that's another story altogether. So that's not true. And real quickly about the Trinity. When you talk about Protestantism, if you're talking about Protestants who affirm the Trinity, because there are some quote-unquote Protestant groups claim to be Protestants, but they don't believe in Trinity. The Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Protestants who affirm the Trinity all agree there is only one eternal God. And this one God eternally exists in three eternally distinct persons. The Father is an eternal person. The Son is an eternal person. The Spirit is an eternal person. They're not the same person, distinct persons existing as one God. Now, how they explain the relationship is the Father, the, the fountain of Godhead, so on and so forth. There may be some differences there, but the basic affirmation that there are three eternal relationships, three eternal divine persons existing in one God, we all accept that, so that's another lie. But CP, if you want to chime in, Muhammad taught the absolute unity of God, CP, again. 
Hold on. You see, first of all, when he said we Christian, we have different Trinity. This is a big fat lie because even the Quran say no, all of us, we have the same Trinity. So that's mean the Quran is a stupid book because all your Quran call us, all of us Nasara. So why your God Allah did not say there is Nasara and the other group? That's mean Allah is a weak in knowledge and he is he need to go to school. Secondly, isn't it you Muslim believe that Allah created from the sweat of horses? So how Allah is one? Yet he is created from the sweat of horses. That means horses was exist before him. And if you are saying to me, I don't believe in that. This is some Muslims, crazy Muslim believe in that. So how you just said to me, we Muslim believe in one thing. Madness of Islam went beyond imagination to imagine that their God is made from the sweat of horses. It says that the Prophet says, يقول عن أبي هريرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لما أراد أن يخلق نفسه خلق الخيل فأجراها حتى عرقت ثم خلق نفسه من ذلك العرق Translation When Allah he wanted to create himself He created the horses And then he made it run until it sweat so bad And then he created himself from the sweat of the horses My friend If we go and take your God Allah to the DNA laboratory we will find that he is from the same family and of horse and donkeys according <laughs> to you not according to us so how you say that we believe in you, you we must believe in the same thing the Darus they believe that allah is al-hakim bi amrullah al-fatimi and he have a son his name is hamza al-bahlawan the shia they don't believe allah have a body the muslim believe allah has a body as an example in, in the Muslim Sunni, if we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, we will find in, in hadith, hadith number 6573, and this is Sahih, that Allah have two shapes. Which one of them is Allah? If you say to me the first shape is Allah and the second shape is Allah, what Allah did to the first shape? He shot it, he burned it, wow. he put it in a cycle machine. How Allah can be two but yet one in the same time? And how Allah have a physical being but yet he has no spirit? And remember the Muslim, they say that Muhammad is the same as Moses. But the God of Moses is spirit. The first verse in the Bible, or it's the second verse, it says that God's spirit is above the, 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 the water. Correct, Sam? Mm -hmm. Above correct, right? the water. So yeah. God of Islam, all of us, we knew that the God of Islam is not a spirit. So how we have, how the same Moses, I mean, it will go, even your God is not a spirit. So what we left, what we left is, what we left is, God who created from the sweat of horses, he might be a mule, and then he have many shape, he exchanged his shape, he, he play hide and seek, and then he have a foot, he have five fingers, he have an ass, he have a face, he have eyes, but yet he have no spirit. That is a statue, that's an idol. So how you, you Muslims, you say to me, we have one unique God, when every group of you have different, total different of God. The, the, the Shia, there is many groups, have two different description of God. The Sunni, there's many groups, they don't agree with each other. Actually, the Sunni, they were slaughtering each other about how to describe God. Actually, not only that, the Muslim themselves didn't agree if the Quran is created or not. Every group have different opinion. And now we have to divine because of that. Because if you say the Quran is not created, that means we have the any created Allah and the any created Quran. As long as the Quran is not created by Allah, then we need to ask who is the divine who created the Quran? Yeah. Unless the Quran is a divine by himself. So now we have to divine. So how you have one God, unique God, but yet you have two any created divine? You got a good question. Now, I hope you guys got your answer about Tawheed. That's a myth. Even Tawheed needs to unify. Any other questions for CPI? I'll ask him if there's any. Is there any? Um, I mean, if we're ready to if we're ready to go on, we have some more object. I mean, we yeah. have some more I mean, we, we, arguments. We, in we fact, destroyed the Tawheed thing. So, in fact, we've got uh, the clearest proof you've ever seen in your life here. Ready? Yeah. What is it's it? It's come from uh, Osama here. Osama, a gentleman yesterday. He said there is a miracle when there was an attempt to huh. capture Prophet Muhammad. Prayers of Allah, <laughs> prayers of Allah be upon him and peace in cave when a bird lay eggs. And uh, in fact, uh, there, there are two versions of this, right? There's the, there's the, the one with the, with the, the spider, web. the spider yeah. with the web. Um, so Sam, go ahead, yeah. go ahead and tell us about this. Or CP, or CP, if you wanna... CP what I want to, before you answer this miracle, you're going to explain. No, no, before, before, before this miracle, uh, before he answer, I mean, I want him to answer, show us the reference. Yeah, this yeah. Is story does not exist. It's a lie. Osama Mas, you heard the challenge. Show us the reference. But what I want you to explain to us, CP, this man just said, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's another thing. Who does Allah pray to when he prays? And by the way, CP, remember, Allah does Salah for, not to Muhammad, okay? Yeah. Don't you make sure, because hijab's going to come after you. 
CP, explain to us, how does Allah perform Salah? Because that means prayer and worship. So does the Muslim God worship? Well, the word Salah, or every Muslim, you ask him how to do, what, what, what if we want to do the prayer, what we do, we say Salah. It's very easy. So because this is embarrassing, so the Muslim, they say, Allah and the angels are sending a blessing. But look, by doing that, what they did, they destroy Islam. Because if Allah blessed Muhammad, who is the angels and who is mankind and why they need to ask for a blessing? He's already blessed. That is silly. That's stupid. It's like somebody, he did feed me. And then the angels, they keep saying to Allah, feed him, feed him. I just feed him, you idiot. He's full. You know? So if Allah, he blessed as the, as the Muslim try to make it look like, then what is the need of the angels to do salah? And then the believers asking Allah to do more salah. And the same time, how angels can bless you? The angels don't bless. God who bless only. Exactly. Angels, like when I say to, to, to David or Sam, bless you, actually I'm making a short sentence, says may God bless you, because I cannot bless anyone. Exactly. Blessing only come from God. But the verse you are quoting, uh, uh, Sam, it's saying it clearly that Allah and the angels both, they are doing one act. What is the act? Salah. So if the word salah means blessing, that means angels and Allah are equal in ability, they can both do blessing and they are the source of a blessing. But this is against what God is about. So when the Muslim, they say we believe in one God, you just made the angels God too, because angels, they can do blessing too. And what the blessing mean, uh, uh, Sam? I mean, give us like description. What, what the word the blessing mean when we say blessing? Yeah, well, when I say blessing, I'm asking God to guide someone to the truth, to provide for his needs, to keep him healthy and to give him eternal life. That's what I do when I say, God bless this person. Okay, but this is mean the angel. If the angels can give Muhammad the blessing, they can give him all those things, correct? Exactly, yeah. But that's mean they are God too. Yep, exactly. You know? Not a problem, Muslims. So you got a problem. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we got another miracle here. You guys ready? Oh, it's another miracle. Another one? <laughs> we have another miracle here. Uh, and this one, you do know the sources for this one. Muhammad traveled to heaven. That was a miracle. And wouldn't that be a miracle if Muhammad actually rode up to heaven seven on heavens. that creature yeah seven going heavens. straight through all of them clearly clearly seven that's not heavens. normal that has to be a miracle so if muhammad performed that miracle how do you guys possibly reject him i mean obviously that's he's right. a, he's a, he's a true prophet okay. if he flew up to heaven you're busted cp abdul how are you going to refute that david, david we have a problem here this abdul now he will leave islam because where in the quran it says allah he took him to heaven i will shave my 20 foot beard if you can show me the verse come on cp you, you can't just follow the Quran alone. You need hadith. Astaghfirullah. You know this. Uh, you know. The Quran says, or what the Quran says, that Allah, he took Muhammad to the farther mosque, not to the heaven. Mm -hmm. And here we need to ask a question. How Allah, he forgot to mention such an important event that he took him to heaven. Mm -hmm. He remember only he took him to Jerusalem. It's not important to say I took him to heaven. It's important to say I took him to Jerusalem. Which one is farther? This is how silly the Quran is. Because if Allah, he took him to the heaven, the Quran should say, and we took Muhammad to heaven. But what Allah says in chapter 17, verse 1, I took him to the farther mosque. And by the way, where is the farther mosque? Exactly. The Muslims say it is Jerusalem. What is the proof? All what it says, Al-Aqsa. Aqsa, there was not exist. There was no exist, no mosque at that time in, 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 in Jerusalem. That's stupid. So where Muhammad he been taken? Which, 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 uh, which mosque? Nobody knows. So, Muslims, they have fantasy. And then to complete the fantasy, they create stories in the, in the hadith. Now, if we go to the hadith and we see how Muhammad, he went to the seven heaven, you will die laughing. In the story, it says that when he went up to the seven heaven, before Allah, he take him, Allah, he cut his chest. And then he cleansed his chest from all the dirt and all the guilt. Question, Sam, question, David. Did God of Moses did the plastic plastic surgery to any of his prophets to take them to heaven before he take them? CP, this is the miracle of the Quran. It's it's foretelling plastic surgery. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know what the purpose of the surgery? I mean, if in the Muslim they say if Allah wants something, he say B is going to be. So why he send the three angels? One of them is Jibreel. They put Muhammad in the table and they start cutting his belly and taking off his livers and his uh, and, and his and his stomach and then they wash it with Zamzam and then after that they install a dish of faith and dish of wisdom. Yeah. Have you ever heard?
of wisdom coming in dishes Muslims here we notice but uh, uh, Sam David did Moses get his wisdom in dishes no because Muhammad was going to be a sign for modern times and one of the signs of today is surgery and plastic surgery so that miracle is only for Muhammad come on Abdul you know but, but are you saying that the the faith of Muhammad is made from silicone yeah it's a miracle what's wrong now you can yeah. get silicone faith why not hey check, check, check out this comment here we have a we have a Muslim saying Allah prays on Muhammad not to Muhammad just so you guys know so you admit he here, prays. Right yeah Allah prays on Muhammad not to Muhammad guys so he admits Doesn't he prays if Allah if Allah prays once he prays that's it he prays but prays. it's on oh, it's to. on Muhammad or for Muhammad it's not to Muhammad come on that, Abdul that Allah's he pray. He prays. It's too late now. It's like you say. He paint. He paint for Muhammad, or he paint for somebody else. Who care? He paint. You know. That's it. I mean, when you say he, he I mean, uh, the Muslims are really funny. All right. So, so our, uh, so you guys are saying you're not persuaded by Muhammad's trip through the seven heavens. I almost was, but he convinced me that the plastic surgery part was even better. Now, no. Now, in the Muslim sources, isn't it true that I, that. Isn't it true that, that he was in bed the entire time? So it, it, at best case, yes, it, it says he never best, left his bed. Best, he never left his bed. So best case scenario, it's some sort of vision, um, which I don't know how that that would be some sort of verifiable miracle. I could I could fall asleep right now and have some sort of vision of myself going to heaven. No Muslim's going to take that as any kind of evidence, not even the slightest, that I'm a prophet. And yet we're giving the Muslims an opportunity here to give their best arguments, their best material, and they're giving arguments that they would never accept for anyone else. If it were, if it were anyone other than Muhammad, they would say this is zero evidence. Yeah. Somehow, when they say it about Muhammad, it's clear proof. All but right. He, um, oh, go ahead. he have an evidence, we have to admit. Look at this. Muhammad, he said in Sahih al-Bukhari, when Allah, he took him with Jibreel by the don flying donkey, he found there the river of Euphrates and the Nile. Now, isn't it the Nile and the river of Euphrates in heaven? They are. So how Muhammad he knew this, you know? So look here, Muhammad, he claimed that he found the Nile River coming from heaven. And both of them, the Euphrates, is coming from under the tree of Lut. If you go to Sahih al-Bukhari, let me get the reference. Uh, hadith number 5610, Sahih al-Bukhari. It says that when he went there, he found four rivers. Two of them is appearance, which means at the top, and one of them are underneath. All the four rivers are well known. Three of them are well known in in the in, in the in the, in the Babylon land, and the other one in Africa, which is your uh, which is the, the 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 Nile River. So how Muhammad is a true prophet in a true story that he went to heaven, but yet he witnessed the Nile River and Euphrates River there. What do you think, uh, David? I think you are good in geography. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to wait for the Muslim response because it's, it's clearly a miracle. Yes, because yeah, it, it because it defies all human reason and therefore it must just be miraculous knowledge. Now, CP, before we move to another question, we're going to need the Arabic expert here because you mentioned 17 verse 1. Uh, mm. And this again will destroy Tawheed. But mm. I want you guys to pay attention. You got the Arabic expert here. Listen to how messed up the Quran is. The real miracle of the Quran is that people think it's miraculous because of so many errors in the grammatical structure. CP, I'm going to read it slowly. I'm going to break it down. I want you to confirm in Arabic. Here, the servant that was taken to Masjid Al-Aqsa, which they say is uh, uh, Muhammad. Muhammad is God. Here's why. Pay attention to this. Folks, please, give me your ears. Devastating verse. Glorified be he, <clears throat> glorified be he who took his servant, that's supposedly Muhammad, his servant, by night from the inviolable place of worship to the far distant place of worship, the neighborhood whereof we have blessed, so, so that we might show him... Some of our signs, he, only he, is the hearer, the seer. Guys, catch it. It says, we showed him. Who's the him? The one who went to the farthest mosque. We showed him our signs. He, the one that we showed our signs to, is the hearer, the seer. Meaning he's all-seeing and all-all-knowing. Hold on. That's supposed to be Muhammad. He was the one taken He's the one who has shown the miracles. He's the seer, the hearer. So either you have Muhammad being being called the all-seeing, hearing one, or Allah is the one that was shown signs by this group called we. So whoever this we is, is showing Allah miracles. 
And Allah is the all-seeing, all-hearing one. CP, isn't it true in the Arabic that whoever this he is, it's either Allah, so there's someone else, others who are showing Allah miracles, or it's Muhammad being shown miracles, and Muhammad is called the seeing and hearing one. Could you explain that to us? Let us take it from the first word. When it says, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdi, he prays to the one who took his slave. Who is talking? The answer is Allah. How Allah is saying, praise be to the one who took Muhammad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here there's a mistake because if Allah is the one, he prays himself, he says, praise be to Allah. Yeah. This is this is must be somebody saying that about Allah. That then is acceptable. But Allah saying, praise be to the one who took his slave. Okay. And then here we need to ask why Allah always talk about himself as the other person. Why he don't say me, the one who took Muhammad. Then we find, as you said, that the Arabic here is mixed up, but the Muslim, my friend, just to give you, give you, to give you the good news, the Muslim they will find a solution. They will say in Arabic, we can delay the description for someone, put it at the end of the sentence. So here it says, as Samir al Basir, this is belong to Allah, does not belong to Muhammad. But in the same time, Allah is saying he took his slave to the farther mosque, which is blessed around to 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 see him or to show him our uh, uh, signs right mm -hmm. but muhammad he did not see any sign because if i go to a mosque that is not a sign hmm. is that a sign if you take me to a mosque if you take me from here to there is that a sign yeah but see if you, sign. Forget, you know what the sign is that he saw a mosque that didn't exist remember there was no temple or mosque so that's a miracle and so, even his wife, she said, uh, even the hadith says that he, he left by his spirit, not by his body. Yep. So he saw what? He saw a vision, you know? So, and what is the purpose of this miracle? Yep. I mean, miracles in the order, in order to show a God ability. But to who? Muhammad already is a prophet. He believed. So Allah, he want to show Muhammad a belief so he can believe. Yeah. He, he want to show him a miracle so he will believe. This is a miracle should be shown to everybody. So why Allah in the Quran, in different verse? And here you see contradiction. Isn't it Allah, he said, that uh, 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 nothing refrain us from sending miracle except people, they call it uh, to be a lie mm -hmm. in chapter, uh, 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 chapter 17, verse number 59? Yep, exactly. That, right? Yeah. So Allah, he says, uh, we refrain from sending miracles. So how this miracle happen if Allah refrain? Either Allah refrain or Allah did not refrain. So if Allah really took him truly, that means there's a contradiction. And the Quran says, if this is a book not from Allah, you will find a lot of contradiction. What if I only find few contradictions? Sipi says a lot. What if a few? Still, can it still be the word of Allah? From the first verse in the Quran to the last verse in the Quran is a contradiction. I guarantee that. And I challenge any Muslim to, to, to challenge our, our ability to prove it. Yeah. From the first page, you know, the first page in the Quran says, in the name of Allah. How Allah speak? He says, in the name of Allah. Yeah. Yeah. He is the one who's talking. Precisely, precisely. Did you have another question? Yeah. Because you're pointing at something. Oh yeah, we have questions here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, just, before we move on, we're we're a little over uh, we're a little over an hour into the live stream. I just wanted to point out that uh, if you want any uh, links to uh, CP's channels and so on, those are in the description box. We've got Facebook, Minds, uh, Patreon if you'd like to support him, and uh, his YouTube channel, of course, and a link to his books, which you can get on Amazon. So just want to draw attention to the links there in the description box. All right, guys, uh, get ready to convert. Okay. Not just, not just Sam and, and CP here, uh, all, all of you Christians, because here we have a, another biblical prophecy. So we're just going to ignore the fact that according to Deuteronomy, Muhammad is a false prophet who would have been stoned to death by Moses. We're going to ignore that. Um, and we're going to look here. God said he will make a great nation out of Ishmael. How could how could the Arabs become a great nation without Muhammad? So follow the reasoning, guys, because once you've got it, you've got it here. Sam, isn't it true? Isn't it true that God says he's going to make Ishmael a great nation? 100%. Okay. Genesis 17, 19 to 21. Okay. So uh, apparently this only applies to the Arabs. And how could the Arabs have become a great nation without, without Muhammad? In what other way are Arabs yeah. a great nation without Muhammad? This is the clear proof. Okay, now here's my question for CP. I'll get into the Bible in a minute. CP, can, can you show me, and I know, you know you're, just, you're not the Muslim here, is there any verse in the Quran 
any verse in the Quran that says Muhammad is the son of Abraham or a son of Ishmael? Is there a verse that says that? Nowhere. Secondly, let me let me add comment, please. Please, no, go ahead. So, who but said, repeat what who, you said. Repeat said that again. That, who said that the Arab from Ishmael? This yeah. is number one. Where in the Bible it says the Arab from Ishmael? That's false. Even in the books of Muslims, it says, and if you have my book, The Session of Allah, you will find that the Arab, they agree, the Muslims agree, that Muhammad, according to the Muslims, that Ishmael, he did marry from an Arab woman, and he learned Arabic from the Arab at the age of 13. So how somebody learned Arabic from the Arab, he is the father of the Arab. That would be the most stupid thing. Mm -hmm. Same time, the Quran says, which means, uh, uh, call them by the name of their father. So how, uh, uh, how the Muslim, they say that he married a woman, she is not from his people, and that made him the father of the Arab. If she is an Arab, then his children should not be Arab. As an example, uh, Sam, correct me if I'm wrong, or David. Did Musa marry from a Bedouin woman in the desert? Hmm. No. What, yeah, what I'm sorry, I apologize because my geography. Freya, yeah, he married uh, Zipporah. Zipporah. All right. And now, is, name, is, by the, is way. the children of Musa's are, uh, her, her, are Jews? They are considered to belong to Musa's yeah, or yeah. they belong to that woman? No, you're yeah, exactly. The, the, that doesn't mean Moses is the father of the Arabs because he married someone from uh, from the desert. Yeah, exactly. that's a false. That's a false, uh, a false argument when they say that. Yes, yes. The top of that, the Arab, if they are, if the, if the prophecy about the Arab, so why the Arab are miserable? I am an Arab. Yeah. We are the most miserable nation in the whole world, yeah. and we are not a great nation. All our population is not even thirty millions. What? The Egyptians are not Arab. The Iraqi are not Arab. Where is the Arab? And you know, if population is is going to make them agree, that's that's stupid. At the same time, we have nothing to be proud about. Where is the Arab? There's no Arab. The the majority of the Muslims are non-Arab. The Muslim, the Arab are not even five to seven percent of the total population. And if you see what the Arab now, the only thing we can say the Arab are great about is having oil. If that will make us a great, like now uh, Saudi Arabia is is meeting in the G20. The great Saudi Arabia, is it a great? No, it's not. 80% of population of Saudi Arabia do not know how to write, how to read. So the prophecy cannot be about the Arab because the Arab until now never was and they will never be great for a very simple reason. Islam destroy everything we have. Exactly. Yeah. And I just want to add something. When you said Bedouin, I was thinking Saudi Arabian. But yes, you're right. Zipporah, Median, they were in the desert. Now, I just want to add the biblical response. You heard what CP said. There were Arabs before Ishmael, even in Islamic tradition, Ishmael married an Arabic woman from the tribe of Jurham, actually two of them. But for those of you who want biblical refutation to this argument, what made Ishmael great? Not Islam. The prophecy was fulfilled in the lifetime of Ishmael. But I want to make this clear. Guys, for those of you taking notes, here's the biblical response to this distortion of this prophecy of the Bible. Genesis 21 verse 21 says that Ishmael's Egyptian mother, Hagar, she's Egyptian, went to Egypt and got him a wife from Egypt. So he didn't marry an Arabian woman from Mecca. Genesis 21, 21. That's the first refutation. The second refutation, because it's a biblical prophecy, it needs to be understood in the context of the Bible. You quote a Genesis. Let Genesis explain it. Here's the prophecy. Pay attention to what the Muslims don't tell you. This is the prophecy. Genesis 17, 19 to 21. Then God said, when Abraham said, Oh, that Ishmael would live before your sight. God said, no, but your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son, Genesis 17, 19 and 21, and you will call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him, Isaac, as an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him and out the promise for Ishmael. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. He will be the father of 12 princes. And I will make him a great nation. So right there it tells you the blessing for Ishmael did not include the covenant. It's right there. The covenant I make is with Isaac and his seed, not with Ishmael. I'll bless Ishmael to become a great nation in that he will have 12 sons who will be rulers. And so have numerous descendants. Now let me read 21. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this set time next year. So it's self-explanatory. He'll have numerous descendants, great in terms of numbers. Now, was that fulfilled in the time of Ishmael or did we have to wait for Muhammad? What was the, the, the blessing? Twelve rulers 
making a great nation. Notice 12. Genesis 25, 12 to 18. Here's the fulfillment. Genesis 25, 12 to 18. These are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, see it's even emphasizing he's Egyptian from his mother's side, Hebrew from his father's side. Sarah's maidservant, which even the Hadith says she was the maidservant of Sarah, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names. Count, folks, according to the generations. The firstborn, Ishmael, uh, I'm sorry, of Ishmael, Nebawith, then Kidar, right, that's two, Adbil, Mipsam, Mishma, I got to get to the camera, Duma, hold on, the camera, Duma, Masa, <clears throat> Hadat, Tima, Jatur, Ten, Nafish, and Kidama, 12 sons. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these were their names by their towns and their settlements, 12 princes, according to their peoples, these were the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years old. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. They lived from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt, as you go toward Assyria. He died in presence of all his relatives. Twelve rulers, twelve sons, great nation, but notice where they did not live. They didn't live in Mecca and Medina. It says they lived from Havilah as far as Shur, east of Egypt, toward Assyria, which would be in Iraq. He died in the presence of his relatives. Please stop distorting the Bible. It does not support Muhammad. And and notice we 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 gave we've been giving everyone the opportunity. We've been giving Muslims the opportunity to bring their best arguments and look at what they've been bringing so far. Um, and I'm having trouble finding uh, many more arguments from the Muslims here. So notice, ladies and gentlemen, we 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 said we're giving Muslims the opportunity to bring their best arguments. This is what they've been bringing so far. Uh, 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 can you, I have something? You've there, got, you got, you've got uh, Ishmael's going to be a great nation. What about what about what the Quran? Good. Even uh, why the Quran did not say I will make prophets from Ishmael. Yeah, Look no. what the Quran says. If you go to chapter twenty nine, verse number twenty seven, maybe Sam he can read it. What chapter twenty nine, verse twenty seven. It says it clearly yep. that Allah gave Abraham two children, Isaac and Jacob. Do you find it, there, Sam? Yep. Here, let me get it for you. Twenty nine, twenty seven. He said, right? Yeah. And we bestowed on him. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we established the prophethood and the scripture among his seed, and we gave him his reward in the world, and lo, and the hereafter, he verily is among the righteous. Which, which seed he mentioned? He Isaac, mentioned and, Isaac Jacob. and Jacob, not Ishmael. So where is Ishmael, and why, why he did not, I mean, how you drop the, the elder in the family, you drop him down, you know? He should mention, we gave him Ishmael, and Isaac, and Jacob, and then we gave from his seed the prophethood, if this is accurate. And to confirm your point, 4516 CP, that the prophet was established among Isaac and Jacob seed Israel, 4516, to confirm what you said, so they don't say you're twisting it. 4516, cannot... and verily we gave the children of Israel the scripture, the command, and the prophethood, and provided them with good things and favored them above all people. So not only were they given the prophethood, they were favored above all people. Why not the Ishmaelites, CP? Yeah, that's uh, that. And at the same time, as I said, the Ishmael have nothing to do with Muhammad. But as always, Muhammad he, and the Muslims are looking for honor. When you have a bankruptcy, you try to attach yourself. How the, how the Jews are evil, and then they say Muhammad like Musa. Like was Musa bewitched? <laughs> no, no. no a, if I say now, if I say to Muslim, you are following a bewitched prophet, they will feel offended. Correct? Yes. Okay, but isn't it your book says that the prophet was bewitched? So was Moses bewitched? Was Jesus bewitched? Never. Was Abraham bewitched? Which prophet was bewitched? Why only those crazy stuff happened only to Muhammad? Yeah. To the point it says in the hadith, the prophet, imagine this is a miracle. The prophet, he imagined himself that he done a thing, but in fact he did not, including sexual intercourse. So how we can trust a man? He imagined he done thing. What about he imagined that he saw an angel? Hmm. What he imagined that the angel was squeezing him? And by the way, why the angel squeezed him? Have you ever heard of an activation of, like did God squeeze uh, Moses at three times? Did God send an angel to squeeze Moses or Isa or any prophet at three times? And why three times? And what happened before the squeezing and after the squeezing? Muhammad before the squeezing was mayonnaise, after the squeezing became mustard. What the squeezing for? Precisely. CP, I want, I want to emphasize again because I, people need to catch this. Notice what you said, and I want you to hammer it. Not only was Muhammad bewitched, 
he was bewitched to the extent he thought he was sleeping with his 11 wives. CP, what does that say about his mind that he thinks he's sleeping, having sex with women? That means something was happening to him where he's thinking he's engaged in the course. Now, how embarrassing is that, that his God would allow that to happen? Not only, not that's not only uh, uh, embarrassing. Uh, uh, if, if you ask the Muslim, they say this is to you, this is black magic. Okay, black magic come from who? They say it's evil from shaitan. Yep. Okay. But isn't it the Quran says that Allah will never give authority to shaitan over anyone except those who follow thee. If you go to chapter 15, verse number 42, if you can read it for us, Sam. 1542, I'm going to get it. I will say it in Arabic and you read it in English. Inna ibadi laysa laka yep. Lo, as for my slaves, thou, you have no power over any of them, save those <clears throat> who are wrong and follow you. Okay, so in order for the shaitan to play black magic on Muhammad, he have to be following shaitan. That's what the verse is saying. So this is a protection from Allah, a promise from Allah that shaitan have no authority over any Muslim. What about Muhammad? So Muslim, they say that Muhammad is ma'soom, which means is protected. He don't do error. He don't do a sin, but the Quran says he commits sin. So here you see the clear contradiction, how Muhammad get himself busted. But I will tell you what happened. Muhammad, because obviously he is a crazy mental man, the Arab at that time, as every time, when they cannot explain a medical condition, they say he was bewitched. So Muhammad obviously is suffering from a, a, a very a harsh condition. He have a, what they call it, chafroniza, and I'm not sure from the English word, you can correct me. Elapsi, right? So like, uh, not only that, like he, he have two personality or three personality sometimes. He's schizophrenic. He's no, schizophrenic. That would be, be multiple personality disorder. Yeah. He's correct. Yeah. So he you will notice Muhammad, he say he speak about things he, he he had done, and then the other person he don't remember what he had done because he is different person. So he he say I did that, but he in fact he did not. It, there's a movie it's called The Perfect Host. If you watch, we see it's exactly about Muhammad, a guy he sent letters to himself, he sent the postcard, he 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 sent, the, he sent postcard from his girlfriend to himself. Uh, uh, I don't know if you watch it. It's very. I watched fun. it because of UCP. You mentioned it years ago, and I went and watched it. Yeah, it's it's very funny because it's exactly Muhammad. This guy he sent letters to himself, and then he believed that this letter is coming from his girlfriend. So <laughs> Muhammad he sent letter to himself, and he believed it is Jibril who gave it to him. Oh man, okay. I'm not supposed to laugh, CP. You're making me laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions for him, or I can ask him? Uh, yeah, th this one, uh, this uh, one's man. this one's a little off topic, um, but yeah, right. I'd like to hear you guys respond to this. Here, uh, our Muslim friend is going to educate uh, you on jihad. Um, so notice, guys, we're giving Muslims every opportunity in the universe to give their best arguments that Muhammad is a prophet. We have mostly Christian, a mostly Christian audience, so what better opportunity can you have to reach people with the message of Islam than right now? And yet, uh, we, we, we've seen some very, very, very strange and weak arguments haven't seen anything that's within a thousand miles of a good argument or even an average argument. Um, in fact, most of, uh, I have to confess, most of what I'm seeing from the Muslims in the chat is trying to change the subject to something else, trying to attack Christianity or something else, even though we're, we're, we're giving you the opportunity to defend your prophet right now. Um, but uh, this is on a little bit different topic, but it is uh, worthy of response. He says, two elements of jihad are spreading the word of Allah and joining good while forbidding evil. First, meaning the upholding of Allah's word. Second, means to spread the good thing, the good doings while preventing evil ones. So guys, Christian Prince and Sam Shamoon, mm -hmm. jihad means two things. It means spreading the word of Allah mm -hmm. or doing good things and forbidding evil. So why in the world would you oppose jihad or resist jihad when it's just spreading the word of God and doing good things. Come on, guys. Come on, CP. I, you can't refute this. I challenge you. Sure. I, you know, in the Hadith Muhammad, he said in Sahih al-Bukhari that the best of mankind are the Muslims because Islam is a supremacist cult. Chapter 3, verse 110. Interpretation of the verse, according to Muhammad, he says, the best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. Uh, so so this is the good deeds of Islam is to slave people put in chain around their neck 
and then you force them into convert to Islam, and that will make Islam a perfect deed religion. For the you are the 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 best of mankind, and I will, I will send you the link, uh, David, uh, uh, and uh, Sam. Maybe you can. Uh, I don't know if you can put it on the screen so people they can see. But this is what this is. Let me let me post it. Uh, actually, I will post it in that chat. I don't know if you can go through. I'm not sure. Let me see. Let us see. Uh, it cannot go through. No, it cannot. I will send it to you. But you see here when the Muslim they speak about uh, their own way of jihad, and then their prophet he speak about totally different thing. That to bring people to Islam, a Muslim have a, they are the best of mankind, and because they are the best of mankind, they have a duty to enslave everybody, bring him like a dog, put in a chain around his neck, and the purpose is noble. What is the purpose to embrace Islam? So this is how the noble Islam work. We enslave you, we humiliate you, we rape your wife, and we killed you, and we take your money, but our purpose is noble. It's like a thief who rape, and then he makes some donation to the mosque. Mm. You see the point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I have a question from an ex-Muslim for him. Can I ask it for him? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, the CP, this is an ex-Muslim. I'm not going to mention his name because... Uh, Seems like he still lives in Muslim country, but he wanted me to ask you this. He goes, please ask CP on my behalf a question. As an ex-Muslim who lives in a Muslim locality, so that's why I don't want to mention his name. Should one learn Arabic and Islamic alim course, take a course on Islam, to better confront my family? Last time, when I tried to speak of my faith, because he became a follower of Jesus, my family called Imam, and he just pushed me off calling me psychologically ill. And he said the history was written by the Jews. And the book says Islam is true. So Islam is true and Islam is true because the book says so. So circular reasoning. So he just wanted to know, do you advise him to study Arabic? And he said something about Islamic alim course, like learn from Muslim scholars to, so that Muslims don't accuse him of being psychologically ill, but that he's educated, he knows the religion and why he rejected. What's your advice to this young brother who loves well, the sake of Jesus? Thank you, my friend. I love him too. Uh, first of all, I have a degree in Islamic law. But in our school, they never taught us taught us anything real about Islam, nothing real. So all the study you do, you don't study you don't study from anyone. You study by your own. Islamic schools they say nothing except Muhammad was perfect. The Quran is amazing. So all those stupid things you have to dig for it by yourself. So if you think if you go to an Islamic school you will learn about Islam, you are mistaken. And actually, 99% of things I say to Muslims, including those who have a beard, they say we never heard this before. So you will learn from who? The Quran says clearly that those who Quran call them scholars is the one who say we believe, not the one who knows. Mm -hmm. So how you want to learn from people who are considered to be scholar just because they say we believe. If we go in the Quran and uh, 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 Sam, he can confirm in chapter three, verse number seven, it says, yeah. and those who they have a deep knowledge, they say we believe, we believe. So what is what is the what is the certificate for you to be considered a scholar? Say, I believe. That's it. So, so no? I hope he answered, heard your question. He's been influenced by you. Glory to Jesus. May you influence more people. And I pray these young soldiers become warriors for Jesus Christ and are sealed by the Spirit. And I pray that for all of us. So I hope you got your advice, brother. I'm not going to mention your name for your safety. And the Lord loves you and watches over you. Do you have any more um, questions? Yeah, I already put it up on the screen. Uh, this is uh, similar to the last one. Um, he says Muslims here. Uh, he says Muslims love Jews. I think he means, uh, given the rest of what he said, that Muhammad loved Jews. He had a Christian wife, wow. and he stood up out of respect at a Jewish funeral. That's it, CP. You're busted. So, come on. How much more tolerant and You're peaceful busted, could man. Muhammad possibly be? He loved Jews. Never You're said cute. anything critical of Jews. He had a Christian wife, and he stood up out of respect at a Jewish funeral funeral he's basically the most tolerant and, and respectful person in history better go to the mosque and take shahada now cp ya kafir. yeah well the, the the quran all of it is about cursing the christians and the jews and not only cursing is about uh, taking an action by violent as an example chapter 9 verse 29 specifically says kill them but as long as he is saying that he married a jew can he tell us how he got the jew wife he raped her he married her how how he married the Jew? I mean, he went to her family. He said, I want to marry you. Give me give me your daughter. No, he went. He killed her husband. He killed her father. He killed her brother. And he raped her. If this is what makes you believe that this is love, 
Well, I hope nobody will rape your wife and say, I love you too, just to confirm love to you in the way you think. So this is stupid to say. Secondly, isn't it the Quran says that the most enemy to Allah is those who call themselves Jews in chapter 5, verse number 82? Isn't it the Quran says in chapter 5, verse number 28, that's, uh, sorry, 328, you have to lie to those who they are not Muslims, specifically the Jews. And uh, uh, what about chapter 5, verse 51? It says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. So when you say that the Muhammad, he liked the Jews, he loved the Jews, when he killed them, he raped them, and he taught nothing but ugly stuff against them. Actually, Muhammad is the only one who believe that lizards are Jews, rats are Jews, monkeys are Jews, mm. and uh, uh, pigs are Jews. Look like this is a lot of love. And here you see, by, by the way, Muhammad, he have a phobia from the Jews. To the point, Muhammad, he said in the Hadith, that if not Eve, no woman betray her husband, and if not the Jews, no food will decay. Is that the love of the Jews, to blame the Jews for everything? And this is in Sahih al-Bukhari. You can read Hadith uh, 3399. This is too much love, my friend. Where is the love, folks? Where is the love? You've been anyway. Any any other questions? Uh, Come yeah, on, Muslims, yeah, we're one. waiting for your best, man. We got CP here. Come so on. It kind of it kind of turned away from uh, actual arguments or evidence, and now That's it's right. people trying to show that Islam is is good, and it's positive, and it's not as bad as everyone thinks. Um, so here's another one. Uh, this comes from support good and righteousness. He says we love and respect all the messengers of Allah: Moses, David, Solomon, John and jesus or okay he's, he's given the he's given the arabic and the and the english names uh john and jesus please do not listen t please do not to a listen blasphemy against the messengers of allah so muslims respect all the messengers but we don't respect muhammad so a couple of things there uh guys do do muslims really respect all the messengers of god or do they just respect what one person says about everyone else. So what do you say, CP, about that? How do you respond to this man's accusations? When uh, when Khadija was in the, in, the, in the bed of death, he said to her, Say, send my greeting to my wives in heaven. Khadija, she looked at him and she said, did you marry women before me? Hmm. Muhammad, he said, I meant Maryam, the mother of Jesus, and Asiya. Oh, what a blessing. So if, if Muhammad respect Jesus, like now, let us say I respect you, but I want to sleep with your mother. I mean, do you see how much respect? Yeah, he's, he's, that's blasphemous, dirty. I'm sorry. I'm going to offend Muslims. That's a dirty pig swine to say it about the mother of Christ. That's why like burning in hell. So when you say when you say such a statement, this is a lie. Muhammad, obviously, he have a mental illness. Yeah. So how, and, and not only not only people who was even long before him, he, he don't tell me that this was a mistake. Allah, he promised him, he married him, Maryam. Ask yourself, what kind of a human being? He will say such a statement that even Maryam, Allah will give her as if Maryam, you know, forgive me God for saying this, yes. as if Maryam, she is a slave for Muhammad and she is no one and Allah will throw her to Muhammad and say, hey Muhammad, take this, Maryam is yours. How disgusting. Yeah. So what you say to me, we respect Jesus, shame on you to lie. Exactly. In fact, he confirm it further, besides the fact of this blasphemy, that's why Muhammad deserves hell and he's under the feet of Jesus. And I rejoice at the fact he's burning in hell for such blasphemy. In Jesus' name, the Lord is victorious. But you can also confirm that according to Qurtubi, when Mary conceived Jesus, she was aroused, wasn't she? Right. Yeah, actually, and if you read my book, Sex and Allah, yes. you will see, according to the Muslims, not according to us, yes. that Allah, he made uh, uh, Mary horny. <laughs> and according to them, uh, she was she like uh, God. He put a sperm inside her. Wow. So when Allah, he arose her, that sperm move wow. and that made Jesus. All right. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is how much they respect. And by the way, Imagine I respect Mary and I respect this is the mother of Jesus. And then I say in the Quran, Mary, the one who preserved her, excuse me, vagina. Yep, 66, 12. Sort of is that how you say respect? Imagine you call me, I speak to you, I ask you about your mother vagina. I respect you a lot, according to you, right? So yep. don't tell me that, yeah. you know.
But CP, this Muslim just got you. He said the hadith where Muhammad says to Khadija, by the way, maybe you can mention where that hadith is. This, give greetings to my wives. He says it's da'if. Da'if. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is. It is da'if. All Islam is da'if. And, and by the way, <laughs> as, as long as he said da'if, let us take it from the end. The second you say da'if, that means Islam cannot be trustworthy. Because when we say, what the purpose of saying this da'if is to say it's not valid. So now you are saying to us and you are confirming that Islam is full of invalid stories. And who is the one who decides what is valid, what is invalid? Someone who came 1400 years after those stories was valid for centuries, but now they are not valid. However, as long as you agree that there's tons of stories in Islam, they are invalid. So how you say that Allah preserve his religion? Yeah. How you say such a thing? If the Quran alone is not enough, for Islam. We cannot find tons of laws in the Quran. All of them, they are in the Hadith. But you just confirm to us that there is a lot of things in the Hadith are invalid. So Islam is invalid too. Otherwise, Allah should not depend on the Hadith. And just to remind you, I will give you a Sahih Hadith to confirm what I said. Muhammad, he says, if any one of you write Hadith from me, which means my words, he should erase it. And this is Sahih, Sahih Muslim Hadith number 3004. So, as long as Muhammad said, and I will give the link to David, if you like to, yeah. put, I don't know if you can put it in the screen, I will put it in the chat. Here we go. Anyone who write a Hadith said by me, erase it, efface it. Okay. Thank you. So, so now if we efface the Hadith, all the Hadith, and we keep only the Quran, how we can follow Islam? It's impossible. There's a video of Zakir Naik was saying to the he was saying to the fool who says we do not need hadith. He said, so how you do prayer? How you, how much you pay zakat? Uh, uh, how 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 he is counting for them that Islam is invalid without the hadith? So Muhammad said you should not follow hadith. Not me. And if you write it, erase it. And look how silly and stupid this cult is. He just said to you, don't write it down. You wrote down what he said. Yeah, I was going to ask you. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like to you, you know, the prophet says, "Don't paint my wall," and I paint the wall and say, "The prophet says, don't paint in the wall." <laughs> uh, beautiful religion. It's beautiful. Come on, CP. This is the beauty of Islam. It's so illogical that it starts making sense. What's wrong with you? Um, I, I did post the follow up here, uh, and we do not make any distinguish between them. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, respected all human being. He was sent as a mercy to all mankind. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That's what he says. So, Muhammad was sent as a mercy to all mankind. He respected all human beings. Guys, is it true that Muhammad respected all human beings? Come on, CP. You can't refute that. It's 21-107 of the Quran. He's a mercy unto all mankind. Come on. Refute it. The mercy, the mercy prophet in chapter 8, verse number 12. Can you show us, uh, Sam, what it says? Or is David? Verse 12, right? Yeah, let me get it for you right here. Chapter 8, verse 12. Come on, he's a mercy. What's wrong with you, CP? I don't know why you have this anger in your heart. Yeah. What's wrong? Okay, let me read it for you. I don't know, man. This guy used to be nice. What happened? When your Lord inspired the angel saying, I am with you. So, so make those who believe stand firm. I will throw fear, terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Then strike the necks and strike uh, their fingers, each of their fingers. Okay, why Muhammad, after he captured his prisoners he is cutting their fingertips he is a mercy if we go in the hadith we will find and this is in sahih al-bukhari or other hadith we will find muhammad he captured a group of people who supposedly took some camels uh, and he uh, 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 and they killed uh, they said it says in the hadith they killed the shepherd he brought them he cut their feet he cut their hands and he gogged out their eyes that is torture. That is not a punishment. Punishment is something and torture is something else. Secondly, uh, if I ask you, I don't know, David or Sam, is, is a crucifixion is a, something from Allah or from the Roman? Is that torture or this is a penalty? Frank, you're confusing me, CP. You're saying what Muhammad did was torture? Well, isn't it obvious putting nails in the eyes of somebody? But can hit merciful, CP. That's what the Quran says. That's got to be mercy. You just don't understand. That's merciful. Hands. What about crucifying a person, putting him in the cross, cutting his hands, cutting his feet, and putting nails 
and let him die slowly. Is that a penalty or this is torture? He doesn't understand. Anything he does, even if it's torture, it's merciful torture. Come on, CP. It's merciful okay. torture. Okay. What is it? Is it true? Maybe, because maybe they will say to you, "This is a this is a hadith. We don't accept the hadith." Merciful. But isn't it, isn't it the Quran says in chapter five, verse number thirty-three, yes. that the penalty of those who wage war against Allah. And by the way, here war is not about war as you think. As an example, now I'm waging war against Allah. I speak against Allah. So the punishment for me for doing that. Is cutting my hands, cutting my feet, and crucifying me, and putting nails in my eyes. Now, CP, uh, curiously, I have two things for you. Isn't that true that this punishment in 533 is the same punishment that Pharaoh threatened against the sorcerers? He said that he would crucify them or chop off their hands and feet of opposite sides? Absolutely. And here we notice that Allah and Pharaoh, they share the same penalty. What? So but, Pharaoh but was a messenger of Allah. Hmm. Not only that, this is a uh, this is this is a scientific mistake. Uh, I mean, history mistake. Because is the crucifixion is something done in the time of the Pharaoh? There was no crucifixion time of it. There was impalement, but not crucifixion. Yeah. So here again, Muhammad is making another stupid mistake. Okay. And why is adopting the Roman or the Pharaoh crucifixion? Exactly. Now here's my my question for you. Then what do you do with Um Kurfa? Was he merciful in torturing her, Um Kurfa? Um Qurfa, she, she was the enemy of the Prophet over the age of 80. He tied her legs in two camels and he ordered them to run in two different directions and he cut her two pieces when she was alive. Wow. And that's absolutely, thank God there's no video camera at that time. You see, everything you saw in ISIS is nothing compared to the ugliness behave of Muhammad. Nothing. Yeah, but Sorry. CP, that's Daif. Come on, Um Kurfa, that's Daif, brother. Daif. Story, no, the story of Um Kurfa is authentic and all Muslims believe in it. And not only that, they praise it. Not a single Muslim, he said it's not a true story. Okay. So, so, um, so, uh, my Muslim friend, support good and righteousness. Um, you've said that Muhammad respected all human beings and was sent as a mercy to all mankind, and yet we know that Muhammad chopped people's body parts off, burned their eyeballs out with hot nails, um, and would have a woman uh, ripped apart by having oh, camels go in opposite directions. So tying her up to tying her body parts up to the camels and then making the camels go in opposite directions and ripping her apart. So, man, if that if that's mercy, I would hate to I would keep hate it. to see what violence is. Yeah, you if, can that's, keep it. if that's the mercy. You know, yeah. Muhammad tried everything, uh, David. He tried everything to scare people. He started terror have stages for Muhammad. So, as an example, when Muhammad he saw Muslim women, he said to them, "Oh, women, give it charity. He want their money because most of you will go to hell. So, in order to get your money, he scared the hell of you." Mm -hmm. And women start taking their ears and their bracelet and give it to Muhammad. Muhammad he saw the Christian, chapter four, verse number forty-seven. He said to them, "Convert to Islam before Allah. He erase your faces." and your eyebrows, and he make your nose go inside your head and make you flat, if, if, if Sam, he can read it. Yep. And here, by the way, this is additional proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. Here we go. He threat them, and that will be done to you now, not in the judgment day, the same as I did it to the Jews. I made them pigs and monkeys. So Muhammad, he threat the Christians. If you don't believe in me, Allah will do the following. Read it for us, Sam, please. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 47. O you who believe in the scripture, believe in what uh, we have revealed. Confirming what is with you before we efface faces, <clears throat> and then it says by making them like the back of necks in the in the parentheses, the commentary of Ali Khan, without nose, mouth, eyes, etc., and turn them hindwards or hindwards or curse them as we curse the Sabbath breakers, and the commandment of Allah is always executed. Allah Akbar. Is it this is a false prophecy, uh, David or Sam? Definitely. Because he promised. If you don't believe in me, Allah will do that to you. This is not in the judgment day because it says the same as we did already to yeah. the people of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. What he did to the people of the Sabbath, they did fishing in Saturday. Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys. So now after 1400 years ago, until now, not a single Christian, Allah, he did that to him. Additional false prophecy because it's a prophecy, isn't it? Yes. When I say Allah will do this to you if you don't believe in me, you know, and that is in his time, not after he died. If you don't believe in me, Allah will erase your faces and make them in a funny way. I mean, look, look, look at the description. How I mean, if you if you read this, you will get scared. Really, I mean, this is true. Imagine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, but, but CP. Since we're on mercy, I want you to help us see how merciful Allah was to His wives. For example, Muhammad married 
Aisha, when she was nine. When he Six. died, she was 18. And Six. all the other wives were in their teenage years and left them with no children and they could not marry. And Aisha lived for many years, childless, without a husband. Was that merciful to do that to these women? Muhammad, he forbid his wives from marrying after him. And that is showing you that he is a mental Ill, is suffering from mental illness. If you ask any Muslim, a woman who is divorced or she is a widow, is it better for her to stay married, to stay to stay single, or to marry? They say no, it's better to get married because yeah. that will prevent her from doing wrong. All right. Yeah. And then suddenly, just because they are the wives of Muhammad, that is a privilege to Muhammad, and no one else have such a privilege. And here you ask yourself. One, you know, one of the uh, uh, of uh, common uh, uh, like uh, things a cult leader they share, they make a privilege for their own. The privilege is about money, about sex, about power. Is that correct, uh, oh, yeah. uh, So Muhammad here he made in chapter thirty-three. If you read it, chapter 33, 53, it says, Allah allow me to marry this and have sex with this and sex and this and this and this and this and this and this and then and any believing women she gave herself to the prophet so he can F her. Hmm. And this is a privilege only to the prophet. Question, what does privilege have to do with Islam? Precisely. What does it have to do with the prophethood? Did God of Musa give Musa a privilege? That any woman she can sleep with him as a privilege to him only, not to the Jews. Why Muhammad he can have limited of unlimited women and Muslim they can have only four because Muhammad have a privilege. Muhammad have the privilege of the booty. In the top of that, any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet, and even if she is married, you see, it says any believing woman, not a single woman, any believing woman she want to give herself to the Prophet, it's a privilege for him. And here you notice that Muhammad must be a false prophet immediately. Uh, I, actually, I saw an article. There's a list of false uh, cult leaders. All of them, they slept with the women who believe in them as a prophet. All of them. With no exception. Now, CP, to add to the story, because I want them to see how wicked, cruel, unmerciful he was, even to those who loved him. So you heard what he said. Muhammad left, at that time, his nine wives when he married most of them they were in their teenage years so when they died when he died most of them were in their early 20s Aisha was 18 left them all widows in in their early 20s Aisha 18 no children no husbands for the rest of their lives and some of them lived to be in their 50s and 60s and he's supposed to be a mercy but here's another one what about Sauda bin uh, bint Zama'a what did he do to her? Because Hadith says she was a very huge fat lady and one of the wives. But what did he do to her? Because he wasn't attracted to her. Sauda, a woman, the Hadith, Bukhari says she was a huge fat lady and yeah. Muhammad wasn't attracted to her. So what did he want to do and what did she do? He decided, he, he, you know, he, she heard the news he would divorce her. So uh, Aisha, she is a smart. She said to her, listen, I have my influence on him. He like kids like me and the young one. So I will have my influence. And if you give me your day, we can make an agreement. And that appear in chapter 4, verse 128 in the Quran. You will see there, it says, Read the, the verse for us. Yeah, let me read it. Listen, guys, this came as a verse in the Quran to justify what, he's, what he did to her. I'm going to read it for... 128 we have articles on this as well and if a woman guys pay attention if a woman fears cruelty or desertion desertion meaning her husband deserting her on her husband's part there is no sin on them both if they make terms of peace between themselves and making peace is better and human inner selves are swayed by greed but if you do good and keep away from evil verily allah is ever well acquainted with what you do so how, how Muhammad here, the hypocrite, he gave, it's okay uh, to be in the shoes. You see, the word in the shoes is the same word used in chapter 4, verse number 34, where it says, if a woman she do in the shoes, we beat her. But a man in Islam, if he do in the shoes, it's okay. The woman she have to agree. Otherwise, he will throw her in the street. The poor woman, Sauda, she became old. And now, Muhammad is going to throw her in the street. So what is the solution? 
She agreed in the terms and conditions which made by Muhammad and Aisha that her day will be given to Aisha and one day more to Aisha mean what? Mean more money. If you remember, there's a hadith, uh, uh, Sam uh, and David, uh, uh, speaking about that Aisha and the, and the other wives, they were fighting over the gifts, that all the gifts goes to the house of Aisha. Yep. And this is why Aisha is entrusted to take the day of Sauda, because that will be extra day where more money come. Yeah. You know, it's not about she is in love with Muhammad, she wants the money, the gifts. CP, don't forget, that means extra inspiration because Muhammad will have another day to be in the dress of Aisha, right? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Aisha, she received uh, Muhammad, he said, and here another prophecy of Muhammad. Muhammad, he said, لا تؤذني في عائشة فإن الوحي لم يأتني في ثوب غير إلا ثوب عائشة Translation Don't hurt me in Aisha for inspiration of Allah or revelation Never come to me except in the clothes of a woman like, uh, except in any clothes of a woman except the clothes of Aisha So here the Muslim in order to cover that Some of them they say this is not about the clothing This is about house But guess what Sam? If this is true about house that means all the prophecy he received while he was in the house of Khadija was false, right? Exactly. If they make it as a, as, a, as, a, as a house, that's mean Muhammad, before he married Aisha, he was a false prophet because he just said, I never receive any revelation except in, in any women's clothing, except the cloth of Aisha. So if the word the clothing here mean house, that means Muhammad, he received zero prophecy or revelation during the time before he married to Aisha. And that destroy Muhammad. If it's mean women clothing, which is what it's meant, that's mean Muhammad is a cross dresser. Nice to meet you. Now, CP, related to that, and we're going to go to another question. Since Muhammad had 11 wives, each one of them had to be given a house. That means Muhammad had 11 homes, but they tell me Muhammad was poor and not rich. Even I don't have one home, but he had 11, right? Well, there is tons of stories about Aisha receiving a lot of money as gifts. And Muhammad, he have no money, but yet he can open at least 11 houses, as you said. Wow. We today, hardly we can run a house. How a man who is so poor, he have all those women. And why Muhammad is poor? Isn't it the best of the booty coming to the Prophet? Yes. Isn't it the fifth of the booty? Let us make an, a simple calculation. If Muhammad attack, and I'm not good in mathematics, maybe some people can help us. If Muhammad and his army attack and they, grow, they got from the Jews or the Christian 100,000 piece of gold, and then the fifth go to the Prophet, and the fifth go to Allah. Muslim, they say, no, the, it's the same fifth go to the Prophet. No problem. The fifth go to the Prophet. So what is the fifth of 100,000 yeah, piece of gold? 20,000, correct? Yeah, yeah. So he gets okay. 20,000? Wow. Say, say, Muhammad, he have an army of 10,000 only. And he got 100,000 piece of gold. And now we have minus 20,000. Okay, what is left is 80. And then we divide the 80,000 at 10,000 soldier. How much each one of them will get? 99 cents. So you're saying Muhammad walks away with the great bulk of the money, but CP, come on, he's going to use it for charity. What's wrong with you? Muhammad, he got a 20,000 20, piece of gold and the Muslim fighter, he will get 99 cents. What? Less than one piece of gold. That's that's a beautiful bargain if you ask me, CP. I'm about to sign up. You and me tomorrow, we go to mosque, take shahada. Yeah. Actually, I, I made a mistake. The fifth of the 100 is 40. So it's my mistake. You mean it's 20,000? 40,000. Yes, it's, it's 40,000. Sorry, it's my mistake. And what yeah. a beautiful religion. Uh, yeah. So if it's 50, yeah. So imagine how much uh, poor he is. The best of the booty, the fifth of the attack, and any woman she can give herself. And Muhammad, isn't it Muhammad in the Quran says that al muallafa qulubahum, which means that those who uh, their heart uh, uh, like uh, is in uh, like not convinced to, to convert to Islam. So Muhammad he paid Abu Sufyan, and he paid his family a hundred camel for each one of them, and many ounce of gold and silver chapter 9 verse number 60 and you can go and read the interpretation Muhammad was paying Abu Sufyan 
100 camel each of his family, and he's poor. In order to convert to Islam, for sure here Muhammad is not wasting his money. Abu Sufyan is a gang leader, fighter, warrior, war warrior. He loved war, he loved bloodshed. And Muhammad, he knew what he's doing. He could not beat this guy. He cannot fight him. Allah cannot fight him. So what we do? It says in the Quran, So what we do? We bribe them. He paid him money, paid him a lot of money to convert to Islam. And I challenge any Muslim to say we are lying. The verse in front of us, the interpretation in front of us, and we can read it. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely true. So, so far, you've seen how merciful, beautiful, and how poor Muhammad is. We're ready to embrace Islam. Now, CP, there's someone, and I don't know if he's being serious, named Adam, Adam Curry. He says, I'm ready to embrace Christianity now. So hopefully, by the grace of Jesus, he's not joking. Let's see. But if there's no other questions, I'll ask a question or two. There's another, okay. there's another question on the screen, but uh, we should go to... Uh... Adam, <clears throat> but uh, how would you guys respond to this airtight case? And uh, now notice, I'm a uh, nothing yet. Huh? I, I, I've been reading with all my might, reading as fast as I can through through the comments, looking for actual arguments that Muslims are giving for their prophet. That's what we set it up for. So Muslims know, hey, you 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 have every opportunity to bring your best arguments for the prophethood of Muhammad. You've come up with nothing, and this is the most recent one I found. Islam always were the wealthiest and smartest civilization. How? And examples uh, are, are Baghdad and Syria. So How? Islam always had the, the wealthiest and the smartest civilizations. So, just, and, and, and guys, if you don't see that, just look around at the world today. That's why anyone who wants to, to learn science, anyone who wants to learn physics or biology or chemistry, where do they go? Saudi Arabia, because that's, that's the capital of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the capital of the, the educational capital of the world uh, that's why everyone goes to the muslim world because they have the smartest civilization and uh, obviously the the wealthiest the wealthiest i mean if you look at if you look at a place uh, in the middle east it makes the united states the, the of course the wealthiest nation in the world look like a joke that's just a fact, ladies and gentlemen if you go to yemen they've got so much money they make the united states look like a joke so uh Wow, guys, have you noticed a pattern here? Namely, it's it's being completely out of touch with reality and just saying great things uh, about Islam. Anyway, okay, go ahead. Go ahead Ibn, Smith. Ibn Khaldun, the philosopher, he said that the Arab, they burned the library of Alexandria. And he said, and he's an Arab, and I am an Arab. He said that the Arab are willing to burn a library with thousands of books for the sake of cooking. And you are telling me that we are the greatest in which way? Syria, first of all, have nothing to do with the Arab. This guy in the front of you on the screen, he's Assyrian. Go and read the history of Assyria, right. how it used to be a great civilization, and what happened since Islam came to Iraq. What are you talking about? Here we go. We have Assyria. We have the Babylon. Yeah. We have people who play the music before anyone knows the music. We have people who have a law. We have people who have kings have kingdoms. And then we have the Arab, who you claim that they are the one who made Syria and they are the one who made Iraq. Iraq and Syria are not Arab countries. Exactly. Syria is called Syria because they speak Syriac, right. not Arab. Isn't it obvious? Yeah. So the, the Aramaic are one of the oldest nation in the world who learn how to write, how to read. While you're a prophet, if your God is about education, he should teach first his prophet how to write, how to read according to you. So how you are a person who brought knowledge to the mankind, but yet your prophet himself, until now he's dead, he did not go to school. And he come with miracles like uh, that woman, she have a sperm coming from her ribs, and the man have a sperm coming from his backbone. Wait, 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 CP, you're telling me that's not true? All this time, that's where I thought it came. I, I thought too. <laughs> What's wrong with you, CP man? You're 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 destroying my 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 world, man. I thought all this time that's where it came from. Ya kafir. Unbelievable. And and you know the funny that today we were talking about uh, uh, about uh, scientific miracles, you know. And by the way, one of them he mentioned that uh, uh, the Quran speak about the preservation of the Pharaoh. You remember this story? Oh, uh, I don't know if you remember. Oh yeah, the it's a miracle. Yeah, yeah. 10, verse 90, how, yes. how, how this is a miracle the, the pharaohs are preserved by doing surgery for them 
Allah did not preserve the Pharaoh. And which Pharaoh Allah preserved? Mm -hmm. Same time, the verse says that Allah, he saved his body from what? So to, to, to be this, to, uh, exposed? But he did not say he saved him for mankind for centuries to come. He said at that time, so people will see. But which Pharaoh, where, when, how? Obviously, Moses was not exist at that time because Moses at that time, he met with the Samaritan. Exactly. So mm -hmm. he comes at the time and the divided kingdom of Israel. So you're right. By the way, CP, I want to ask you something about that. In chapter 10, verses 90, 92, it says that Allah will save him in his body. Doesn't that mean that if he's going to save him in his body, that means he's not going to drown? But well, because what does it mean to save you in your body? Well, you know, the, the, we go like the Muslim, they will say to you that, uh, uh, you know, he saved his uh, body, but not, he is dead. But his body exposed in the shore. Mm. But that will not make any uh, a sign. I mean, was, uh, where is the sign in there? You know, if his body in the shore, well, a lot of bodies were in the shore. Imagine you have tsunami and tsunami took everybody in the way. Then the water will go back. And then you will find thousands of bodies, not only one. So what the verse there is saying, supposedly, that Allah will make it as a sign, which means he will show them his ability in what he can do. The Muslim today, they say, this is about Allah making it as a miracle. And here we go, the Pharaoh body is preserved. But the Pharaoh body, which we talk about today, is preserved, have nothing to do with that Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And it is not the one who drowned. And it is not by Allah it was by making a surgery, taking his stomach, taking his uh, origin, or, organs, and putting uh, some chemical to preserve the body. Mm -hmm. And by the way, none of the Pharaoh's body is still preserved. Mm -hmm. If you think this is a preserved, they are fooled. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, the, uh, uh, the, they did an autopsy on uh, the body of that Pharaoh. And it turns out he had, uh, he had uh, horrible, horrible arthritis and would never have been uh, going around chasing the Jews or doing anything else. He would have been, uh, he would have been stationary and bedridden. Yeah. So, uh, so much for the crime. So, and they tried to make a miracle. You know, the whole point is to try to, to, to find something. Uh, and, you know, like uh, when, when we talk about the Quran, is the Quran is just a book or just a verse? So let us say for the sake of argument, Allah was smart and he knew about the Pharaoh, but he is a stupid. He think that the sperm coming from the backbone Allah is smart about the Pharaoh, but he thinks the women have a sperm coming from the location of the necklace of her ribs. Allah is smart about, about the Pharaoh, but he thinks that the, the human being is made from a sperm who transform into congealed blood. Allah is so smart about the Pharaoh, but he thinks that Isa is the nephew of Aaron and Moses. So, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's amazing, but when you are desperate and you're suffering from bankruptcy, you look for pennies. Um, we did want to uh, check out Adam here. Uh, no idea whether uh, whether this is true or not, but whether it is or not, um, always good to explain to people how to become a Christian. So, Sam, do you want to uh, yes. explain to Adam here? No. Now, Adam, if you're you're being sincere and not just being sarcastic, what you need to do is confess from your heart. Romans ten nine. Confess from your heart. Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is Lord of your life and believe that he died on the cross for your sins, but then God raised him. So I'm just simply giving you the Bible, Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So believe Jesus is Lord, confess it, believe it, that he's the son of God, because in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, his only begotten son, that whoever who believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So believe, confess, Jesus, you are Lord, my Lord, the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins. God raised you to life, and you, you rule as Lord over creation. Forgive me, transform me, give me your spirit to live for you. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to pray these exact words. There is no magical formula, but I want you to speak to him because Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. He's closer to you than you can imagine. And he hears you when you cry to him from your heart. Say, Jesus, you are Lord. You are the Son of God. You died on the cross to save me. You are alive. You've been raised from the dead. You will come again. And I want to trust in you and love you because you love me. Save me, Lord, and make me a vessel for your glory. Say it from your heart. The Lord will save you, forgive you. Then find 
mature Christian brothers and sisters because you need a family. You need brothers and sisters who will pray with you, who will love you, who will be there for you, and someone qualified to teach you the Bible. So not, unfortunately, not everyone is qualified to teach you the Bible, but study the Bible, learn the Bible because that's God's voice. That's God's love letter to you. Find a, a solid man of God who knows the Bible, who can teach you, and solid Christians who can be family because you need a family to support you. And you begin your journey and worshiping the Lord. And eventually, you're going to need to get baptized. We don't believe baptism saves you. But that act of baptism is a sign, a public testimony. I died to myself, and I give my life to Jesus. And from now on, I live for Him as my Lord. So I hope that helps you. And I pray the Spirit guides you, and I hope you're sincere. Because I can tell you one thing. Life doesn't get easy because you're Christian. In fact, now it's going to get harder. Satan's going to try to now attack you more. He's going to raise people to attack you and threaten you. But I can assure you, if you belong to Jesus, nothing in all creation, not even Satan himself, will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's his promise. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And I will not leave you fatherless. I will come to you. And Jesus says, because I live, you will live also. He loves you more than you can imagine. Trust in him. He created you so you can enjoy him. And, lo and be loved by him. So turn to Jesus. You know, so, Sam, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. This, this brother here, he want to be Christian. Uh, are you saying he have to be sincere, not only saying Shahada? He's got to say it from his heart, CP, not lip service, you know? Absolutely. Okay, can you read for me chapter 49, verse number 14, where in the Quran it says, you do not need to believe. All what you need is to say Shahada and you are a Muslim. Yeah, exactly. That's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And here we see the difference between Christianity and Islam. In Islam, you can be a Muslim and you are a hypocrite who don't believe. Yeah. In Christianity, it's not saying, Lord, Lord will save you. Just what Jesus said. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father. But what? The one who do his will. So yeah. you have to believe and you have to be honest in your belief. In Islam, no. You can be a hypocrite and you are a Muslim. Even Allah is saying to them, don't say we believe. Say we are a Muslim. Can you read it for us? Yes, here it goes. Chapter 49, verses 14 and even 15, it says... The Bedouins say, we believe. Say, you believe not. You don't believe. But you only say, we are Muslims. For faith has not entered your hearts. But if you obey Allah and His Messenger, He will not decrease anything in reward for your deeds. Verily, Allah is the forgiving, most merciful. I can read the next verse if you want, or you want me to stop there? Here, there is a fast translation. Yep. It doesn't say, you, you say, it says, Allah is saying to them, but you should say, we are Muslims. Qulu. Aslamna. Don't say we believe. Allah saying. Allah talking. قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولم يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم. The uh, the Arab they said we believe. Say to them you did not believe. Well, but you should say we became Muslims because faith never enter our heart. And here this is the question: How you Allah saying to them? Call yourself Muslims, and yet you saying faith never enter your heart. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Well, that's yeah. that's CP. You still don't get it. In Islam, torture is merciful. Irrationality, being illogical, that's logical. What's wrong with you? I guess the sperm didn't come from yeah. your mother's being necklace. Liar, but I'm being a liar. Make you a believer. Thank you. It says. it says, be a liar. Say I be, Say I am a Muslim. But you don't believe. Obviously, they are hypocrite. They are not. They, they got scared. And why why those Arabs, they say that? You find the answer where Muhammad, he threatened them. He says, if you don't convert to Islam, you know, if you see the chapter 48, verse number 16, say to the Arab, you are going to be uh, uh, invited to fight people of almighty war, warriors. So either you convert or you die. In verse number, chapter number 49, it happened. They converted to Islam. But, and they said to Muhammad, we believe. He said, you cannot fool me. I know you don't believe. You are just Muslim. <laughs> That's it. So a Muslim means you're not a believer. Beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, we should be wrapping up here in the next couple of minutes. But we do have one final outstanding proof that Islam is true. Man, uh, something that will buddy. school uh, both of you indisputably. Um, if you claim that Prophet Muhammad... Allah's prayers be upon him and peace. He said prayers too. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you claim that Prophet Muhammad was fake, how did he perform the splitting of the moon? 
Check, oh. Christians. How did Muhammad perform? The spirit of the moon. Plat out. Check, you, done. you shish kebab, Abdul. Actually, this one is a proof that Muhammad is a false prophecy, false prophet. Why? Because he prophesied that this is the judgment day, day. What it says in Arabic? Chapter 54, verse number one. Question. Did the judgment day come? No. When Muhammad, he said that 1400 years ago. Secondly, did the moon split? No. That means Muhammad is a false prophet. When you say the moon split, Muhammad, he saw an eclipse. And even the hadith confirmed that when the prophet, he see an eclipse, he used to run. And one of them actually almost he run naked just because he saw an eclipse. And he started bowing down many times, praying and terrified. So you see the eclipse, you, th you think the moon is split. And then you claim that this is a sign of a judgment day. That will make you a false prophet. And this is what David said in the beginning, right? There's, there's a, the, what, the, what the Bible says about a false prophet. Prophesy in the name of the false god mm -hmm. or even give false prophecy, you know. I mean, here we go. Mm -hmm. He prophesied in the wrong name of the wrong god and he gave false prophecies. So how even you mention this, if I am you, I will hide it. Because Muhammad, he claimed that in Arabic it says, اقتربت الساعة. He did not say, he did not say uh, judgment day is going to come. No, no, no. He says, it's almost here, almost, and the moon is split. So what the moon is split was a sign of the judgment day. So how a sign of judgment day started 1400 years ago and nothing happened? Who is the silly here? Yeah. You see, he did not say, and by the way, when you, when Muslim, they say the prophet, he split the moon. Where in the verse it says he split the moon? And where it says even Allah split the moon? Yeah. No, it doesn't say that. Yeah. It's report what happened. It's report that the hour became so close. And the moon split. It doesn't say who make it split. It doesn't say who did it. In the same time, it never happened because if the moon is split, by the way, the moon will be destroyed. One piece, if the moon, if the moon became two pieces, like a watermelon, one piece either going to grab by the earth and the other piece will be grabbed by the sun. And the moon will not stay there. The reason for the moon to stay in its location, its mass and it is weight. Otherwise, the moon will not be there. It's there for a reason. So if we play with the size of the moon, the moon place will change and right away is going to be grabbed by the biggest object around him or on the moon either the sun or the earth so this is a stupid statement silly statement proving muhammad to be false prophet yeah. let me just uh put a shout out there's a syrian guy his name is jesus only a syrian i hope you're listening jesus only a syrian i think he may be a modalist jesus only a syrian if you're hearing me please go to my channel shamunian subscribe watch the videos i do on the trinity but contact me Jesus only a Syrian and any Assyrian as well, because I hear there are Assyrians converting to modalism. Contact me by my email because I want to talk to you guys. My email is S A M S H M N S A M S H M N at yahoo.com. Please reach out to me because that Jesus only. I think you've become a modalist. I hope not, but if so, I want to talk to you. Contact me, please. So go ahead. And by the way, uh, Sam, isn't it the Quran says in chapter 17, verse number 59? Nothing made us refrain, make us refrain from sending miracles. So how Allah, he split the moon. And then he said the verse after saying, I refrain from making miracles. Yes. In fact, you know, it's my favorite passage, CP. Uh, yeah. in 29, 50 to 51. And the reason why it's because if Muhammad did miracles, that means the Quran is a fraud. Let me give them 29, 50 to 51. And I'm sharing it for them, not with you, obviously. You know this stuff. Guys. Remember what CP just quoted, 1759. There it says, Allah refrained from giving Muhammad miracles. So how can he split the moon if he didn't give miracles? But this one, if he didn't do a miracle, the Quran is a lie. Here's why. Guys, pay attention to 29 verses 50 to 51. They say, why have signs not been sent down upon him from his Lord? See, they're asking, if Muhammad did miracles, this is a silly question. I mean, if he went around doing miracles like the Hadith says, then why would they say, why haven't... He'd been given signs. He'd say, I've been given plenty. This shows he did no miracles. Say, now here's the response. The signs are only with God, and I'm only a plain warner. Well, we know, Muhammad, the signs are only with God. Now, who was it with? With Satan? Anyway, I'm only a plain warner. Now, here's the key, 51. What? Is it not sufficient for them that we have sent down upon thee the book that is recited to them? Surely in it, that is a mercy and a reminder to a people who believe. Now, notice two things. Muhammad says, I'm only a plain warner. The signs are with my Lord. He hasn't given me any because I'm just a warner. But hold on. 
You got the Quran, it's sufficient for you. So understand the argument. If you understand this argument, you destroy the Hadith and the miracle stories. Because the Quran is sufficient to prove Muhammad is a prophet, no miracles were given. But if they say he did miracles, that means the Quran is a lie. It wasn't sufficient. He needed more evidence. So damn if you do, damn if you don't. Remember those verses. And there's many verses actually in, 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 in saying the same. Yep. Many verses saying why Muhammad, he don't give him, uh, his God give him a miracle. You know? And this is why Muhammad, he come with the excuse saying, well, if he give me a miracle or not, you will not believe. Yeah. But this is a lie again. Even this one is a lie. Huh. Because... All the people of Quraysh, they believe. Uh, the Muslims, they say he forced them, not forced them. They became Muslims. Yeah. So, and why Allah, he gave all the miracles of Isa, and suddenly he refrained. I mean, this is stupid. And when he says, nothing made us refrain from sending miracle except people before generations, they accused them to be a lie. That is a stupid lie too. Because the Christian believe in the miracles of Jesus. The Jews, they believe, even the Jews, they believe in the miracle of Jesus. As many Jews are Messianic Jews, the Christian Jews. Yeah. So who is the one who don't believe? And, and this fact, is because he is, is a false prophet. In fact, CP, just to confirm what you said, the, ver the, 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 the Quran says, well, Allah gave miracles before and people disbelieve. But then here's my question. Didn't Allah know that when he gave the miracles to Moses, they wouldn't believe in the miracles and in Moses? But he still sent them, right? Yeah. So and, then, okay. why stop stop with Muhammad? You already what sent miracles to Moses. You know they wouldn't believe it. Then he said he um, um, uh, millions of miracles according to Muslims. Yeah, why so, send miracles if, if those miracles will not do anything? Thanks. If you go to chapter two, uh, 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 I think uh, uh, two one eighteen. I think two one eighteen. If you see it, uh, Sam, if you can get it, yeah, read it. Okay. Chapter two, verse one eighteen, where it says. They are saying to Muhammad, we wish that uh, he can bring us, uh, you know, some miracles. Yeah, let me we read it for you. And they that know not say, why does God not speak to us? Why does the sign not come to us? So spoke those before them as these men say, their hearts are much alike. Yet we have made clear the signs unto a people who are sure. Hmm. Execute, false execute. Yeah, exactly. So why Muhammad did not say, here we go, I split the moon for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, you know what, CP? I think you got destroyed today. Islam has been proven to be true. Muhammad mm -hmm. is the prophet. We've established there's merciful torture. There is irrationality that's actually quite rational, right? And, you know, and unbelief is a sign of being a true Muslim. You got destroyed. And You've I, been buried, I, Abdul, shish kebab, yeah, potato. Yeah, there's more miracle, actually, we did not talk about because we are trying to hide the truth. Right. As an example, Muhammad, he promised, he said that he will have the power of 40 men, mm -hmm. 4,000 men, sorry, in the heaven for sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. See? I mean, that's amazing. You cannot deny that. The, the, the eternal erections that Muslims will have. 70, 70 and, years. 70 and, years. And Allah, Allah uh, making the, the, the girls virgins over and over again. I mean, these are all right. miracles, man. <laughs> Yeah, miracle too. And even there is in the tree in the in the heaven there is trees uh, like the fruits. You open them, there is there is girls like uh, like cabbage, you know. And this is and then the girls in the heaven, by the way, they are going to be. We will see through the bones, the marrow of their bones. I mean, what do you want more? And the man in the heaven, uh, uh, I don't know. You know, I'm sure you know about the hadith where it says in the heaven there is a market where there is no buying nor selling except images of men and women. And if the believer he chose one, he jumped in it. I mean, this is a miracle. Yeah. This is the, the virtual fantasy exists long. How, how Allah, he knew this? You know, now you wear glasses and you see things which is not true. Muhammad is saying that to you. In the heaven, there is images, bazaar, the whole mall. There's nothing. There's no tomato, no potato, exactly. except images. Right. And the images for what? Men and women. And who is the customer? A man, which means homosexuality. So because the customer is a man, but the image is for men and women. And if a believer man, he wished to have sex with one of the images, he jump in it. And you are telling me Muhammad don't have a miracle? You must be crazy. Exactly. And CP, one thing I am going to be upset though. I was told that if you go to paradise, you won't need to go to the bathroom. But to be honest with you, I'm going to be upset because you know what? I can't pass gas and... You know, and that's not going to be pleasant. You know, you know. No, there's no gas. If no... I want to pass gas, can will Allah give it to me? No, there's no gas in the heaven, and there is no pee. But here we have a problem. You better gas. Because we have no gas, and we have no pee. So what? Uh, you will, the, the the man who will have orgasm, he will give what? A glue? 
I, mean, I don't know. And then same time, other miracle. As as long as long <laughs> as long there is no gas, there is no dirt, there is no shower. You will never get dirty. Your clothes will never get wrinkles. So what is the eighty thousand little boys doing? We're gonna play harps together. We're gonna play tag, and we're gonna play monopoly. Remember, whatever I want to do. Mon why they are white? Why they are white like pearls? What about why they are white and they are so describe them as very beautiful, pretty? And why they will not bleed? Uh, yeah. So, and not only that, what about the child abuse? Any Muslim like to be a child in the heaven of Allah, who serve others for eternity? So your God, not only he teaches slavery in earth, even in heaven, you have a child abuse. How disgusting. Unbelievable. Well, what a beautiful religion. You've convinced me to go to the mosque over here and take shahad. I'm going to say that uh, Allah is Satan and Muhammad is his messenger. So I'm ready. Are you ready to join me, CP? I just, I, I said it before you. You are too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, everyone. So, uh, yeah. You can't say we didn't give Muslims every chance yeah, in the world to. Uh, I mean, these are there's there. We know that there are Muslims in the chat who spend all their time watching Zakir Nike videos because those are the arguments they normally come at us with, and yet they couldn't produce anything even close to a convincing argument for their prophet yeah. or their book. Why is this? I'm starting to think that maybe it's because. There is no good argument for their prophet or their book. Um, and everything they did bring up just turned out to be more evidence uh, against them. Um, but we, we, we do have, uh, we did have some Muslims who had to go. So we have here, he said, uh, I got to bounce now. Y'all hypocrite, liar, lost souls, Fajr Salat time. Bye bye, dummy infidels. Now notice, we're the dummy infidels. <laughs> He's the guy who couldn't come forth with one single argument in defense of his prophet. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, now he would pray. He have to face the Kaaba. How he can explain that? How he can face the Kaaba? Yeah. Because his God, he taught in the Quran that the earth is flat. Yes. Yeah, he did. That's yeah. time for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and all I want to conclude is, guys, I want you to continue to pray for a Christian prince because <laughs> you live in a time in which <clears throat> the Lord has blessed us with so much resources and he's raised up so many soldiers to glorify his name, to destroy all these false views, whether atheism, secularism, Islam. God is faithful to his church. The Lord Jesus loves his people, and he raises up lions in every generation. And I believe this is the generation. Because of technology, we will do the greatest destruction against these false cults, especially Islam, with people like Christian Prince, David Wood, and others. Pray for this man. Pray for David Wood. Pray for their families and also pray for me and for my daughters that the Lord Jesus will be glorified in our lives, glorified through us, that we will never shame him, never dishonor him, love him more than anything and be willing to die for him and that the provisions will be there to continue to do this. Don't forget Christian Prince in your prayers. Don't forget David Wood, his family. Don't forget me and others. Anthony Rogers, Edward Dalcor, Vocab Malone. There's many. Adam Coleman, many. Pray for your soldiers. If you've been blessed by CP and the rest, pray. And consider supporting them financially. But most importantly, pray that we never shame Jesus Christ. Never fall from favor. Never compromise. Never sin and shame the Lord. To love Jesus with all our hearts, our souls, our strengths, our minds. And be willing to die for him because Jesus is worthy. And I want to thank Jesus for Christian Prince. Thank my Lord Jesus for David Wood. And thank him for all the other brothers and sisters. And thank him for you who support us and pray for us and are doing this work. And I thank Jesus for counting me worthy, his profitless servant, to be used for his glory. Because I cannot imagine, CP cannot imagine, David Wood cannot imagine, life without Jesus. We love Jesus, and we love you, Son of God. So thank you, Lord, and thank you. Amen. And uh, Christian Prince, um, I pointed out, everyone, that uh, Christian Prince, is the, the links to his, uh, his sites and his Patreon are in the description box. So be sure to click on some of those. And uh, Christian Prince, any uh, final words for everyone? Well, I want to say thank you, David, for having me. And I'm glad to have uh, Brother uh, Sam, who is a, a great warrior, too. And, uh, you know, we are here doing our part. Now, you Christians who are listening, you should do your part. Amen. And your part, do whatever you can to support those who they are doing the work for you. And here we know we have David and we have uh, Sam. And all of us, we knew that... If we are three of us talking here to ourselves, 
then our work will not be really so much active. So this is why having you, all of you, is a, is a, is a blessing for us. And I believe that the Lord, he blessed us with having 2,000 people listening. Yes. The Messiah he have in the beginning, 12 only listening. Yes. So we are blessed. So I wish and I pray that every one of those 2,000, he will be a disciple of Christ and he will carry the truth Amen. and he will share it. And the truth will set you free. And the only truth we have is Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, Amen. God our Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three person, one God, Amen. and we are again, and we don't believe in stones, and we don't kiss the stones, and we don't bow down to anyone save God. Thank you very much. Tell them when's the next time, because they want to know schedule for next time. Um, well, you and me will probably be live again, uh, probably tomorrow. Um, we should do this again sometime. Maybe the, I mean, we announced it ahead of time. We announced it yesterday that we were going to do this, uh, that Muslims were going to have an opportunity to defend their prophet. Yeah. Um, maybe we didn't give them enough heads up. Yes. So maybe, uh, we'll maybe, uh, again, yeah. yeah, when Christian Prince is, is free again sometime in the near future, we'll do it again. Give Muslims the opportunity to bring forth their best arguments. They can go, they can start now. They can go start watching their Zucker Nike and, uh, watching their D dot clips and watching, uh, watching all these, uh, these, yeah. these, <laughs> these brilliant Muslims, uh, these brilliant Muslim apologists and their arguments and, uh, and and bring them here, share them with us. And we'll give you another opportunity again to talk to thousands of Christians. Because you, again, we got we, we had we had 2000 yeah, people here, we've had, here live, God. but uh, but tens of thousands will watch this afterwards. So uh, you'll have an opportunity to share your best arguments for Islam with tens of thousands of Christians. And we're going to give you that opportunity. So yeah, why would you want to take that? Now this guy emailed, Ronnie, I sent you the email and comment section. Sam. S H M N Sam S H M N at yahoo.com and Jesus only a Syrian contact me. So contact me, Ronnie. Agabessa. God bless you guys. Christ is risen, risn indeed. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Uh, as I said, uh, did they know the topic, David? Yes, I believe we said that. I, I, we, we said that on the last live stream. There are a bunch of Muslims there. We've been focusing on Christian topics, and I said, hey, now we're gonna now we're gonna focus on Muhammad and what the evidence is and uh, give Muslims the opportunity to do that. And you saw what they came up with, ladies and gentlemen. You saw what they came up with. Why? Why isn't there a Muslim who can come up with one single persuasive argument for Muhammad? Because there is none. That's what I think. And uh, they can always they can always take every opportunity to prove me wrong. All right. See you guys next time. Again, Sam and I will probably be live again tomorrow night, 8 o'clock p.m. Hope to see you then.